Ooh, Bobby Fast Guns today. We got Bobby Fast Guns on this one on Pass the Gravy 474. Happy Gravy Day, everybody. Robert, well. Alex, and Pat back at it again. And uh, yeah, this is like our, our third time trying to start this podcast because Pat's been having some technical difficulties getting uh, getting going. But we'll get to that here later on. We got a fun-filled podcast for you guys today. We are going to be... Um, we, I got some great ideas, I feel like, in the pre com segment we're going to start you off with. I have an interview with Paul Shear, who's been in just about everything. Actor, comedian Paul Shear. He's got a, a award-winning podcast that we don't necessarily have. Uh, how did this get made, where they review terrible movies and just kind of like they watch them and then just break down all the dumb stuff that happens in it. Uh, Pat and I know him probably the most from The League on FX. Uh-huh. Absolute gem of a dude, but uh, I had about 15 minutes with him earlier today that we're going to put that in the podcast here coming up in just a little while. And uh, yeah, let's get right into things though uh, with the pre-com segment where we get to bring up the questions and, uh, and thoughts we had, we wanted to share with the gang. Uh, I know we talk about buying franchises and how like owning a sports franchise would be the coolest thing in the world. I feel like if we had to agree on a sports franchise that we could own, like Pat, it's like, Oh, I'd want to own the Packers outright. I'd want to own the giants. Robert would probably want to own the Astros. But like if we had to agree amongst the three of us on a team to buy, who would it be? Like what team would we purchase? I think it would have to be the Astros just because I don't think Robert I wouldn't would want to buy the Astros. Yeah, I don't, but think... I don't think Robert would want part of anything else. Robert would... is like Robert's in the market for owning a sports franchise. So it has to be something that Robert agrees to. I think it'd, it'd be like something we both, we all agreed that we dislike. So we kind of ruined that franchise. The, the Dallas Cowboys. We could do that. Dallas Cowboys. Or, them into I, don't the wanna, I don't want to own the Cowboys though. I don't want, I don't want to well, own something that I'm actively trying to kill. Texas Rangers. Oh, okay. I, here's either. what I think it would be. It's either going to be West Ham because like, you know, whatever. Neither me or Robert West dislike Ham, it. We don't really care about it. Or the Sugarland Skeeters. Really minor it's be a professional franchise, cards. and I was thinking like it had to be one of the American four major sports. Oh leagues. my god! Um, the Premier League, West Ham's kind of a cop out. Obviously, Dallas I would stars? love to own West Ham. Nope, don't <laughs> want to own the Stars. Be a team. I think the Rockets, maybe, but like, I yeah. honestly, like if I was going to own a, a franchise, I don't want to own a basketball team. Neither do I. Like, fuck basketball. I don't care. Dynamo. <laughs> not one of the four major franchises, but Dynamo. I would also Saber Cats, rugby. Again, not one of the four <laughs> major leagues. I'm talking Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, NFL. We're not going to come to a consensus on this, though, then. This is actually a pretty hard question to answer. But we all had to I know that's one. why it's like that's why I was like I, I want us to all three agree like we have money that can't be spent unless the other two people in the podcast also agree with you to spend that money. I don't know Who, if that's a who's a team situation. that nobody hates. I'm immediately thinking uh San Francisco Giants. I don't want to own a team in San Francisco. I would own the Giants. The Giants would be a cool team to own. No, that's that's, that's, you're thinking of the wrong Giants. But still, like I could say I'm an owner of the Giants. They're like the football team, your favorite. Like actually, no, I could only own the. Here, here's where we can't agree, though. I don't want to own a team in San Francisco because if I own the team, I'm going to want to be at all the games, and I don't want to fucking live in San Francisco. Well, you would be an owner of a sports franchise, so you'd probably have some cash to like have a place in San Francisco and a jet. Yeah, Not I'm also thinking what, what would be a good place to visit. Like, I would actually like being there. Okay, oh, you want to be – you think San Francisco still plays – no. Okay, if we're going to do that, we're going to go slam Diego. I wouldn't hate that either. That I would, cool yeah. Jerseys. Don Orsillo so is the fucking commentator for the team. He's the best in the business. But you know what? No, I don't think I'd want to own a, a National League team. Would you want to own a hockey team ever? Would you be down to own a hockey team? I couldn't name you one hockey team. I know the Vegas. Vegas Cause you like, yeah, the I was going to say Vegas. If we get the Vegas Knights, Robert, you could go to all the shows. The shows in Vegas are phenomenal. You see Cirque du Soleil every night. 
I feel like hockey's out. I feel like hockey's out. Colorado, we could own the Avalanche. Robert, you can just smoke all the weed that you want. I don't want to own the Avalanche. Rockies, maybe. The Rockies seem like they'd be cool. Maybe. I'm just I'm I'm trying to think through just like teams that no one hates, like or just teams that are just generally like not that nobody hates them, but like you kind of root for them because they're just likable. Buffalo Brewers. Bills. Uh, Robert said he doesn't want to own a National League team. Why would you, why would you want to own a team that like win against your team in the AL though? No, I'm thinking World Series though, like the Astros. I don't want like if the if we're going against the Padres or whatever, the the Rockies. I don't want to, have to root against the Astros in the World Series. You'd rather knock out the Astros. Hmm. So maybe it can't be baseball. Actually, I would think you would want it to be the National League. So that way, at least one of your two teams is going to win. Yeah, that's a good point. What if we bought, and Alex, I know this is in your division. What if we bought the Washington Commanders just to take them away from Dan Snyder? No, because it's too much fun to watch him screw it up every year. Touche. Good point. Uh, I don't want a racist history. Pittsburgh. The Steelers? Mm. Oh, I like the the Steelers. Ooh, you know what might be a fun one? The Indianapolis Colts. Just because when fast food chains test out new products, they always do it in Indianapolis because it's like the greatest cross-section of all Americans. So we could try out all the foods that fast food places are trying. We'd be rich enough to own a team. I think we could just try that anyways. Okay, I mean, I'm just trying to give options here, and you're just shitting on everything. I bet the Rockets would be an easy one to agree on, but like, I just wouldn't care as much. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. No. And nobody. But none of us want to. What? We haven't even said why not the Texans. We would be heroes here. We would be heroes in this town. Taking it away from the McNairs. <laughs> and literally did like they won five games. They'd be like these guys know what they're doing. Yeah, we here's here's what we make. Listen, everybody, we're not Maybe the McNairs, and we haven't paid a quarterback a bunch of money whose favorite pastime is sexually assaulting women. Yeah, we didn't do that. We're the right. new guys. A new regime. We're cleaning it up. And, and, and you like, you know what, guys? The two times a year when it's good weather, we are going roof over. I don't. I could buy the Texans, but we make them tank whenever they play our teams. I mean, I don't think we need to. They ain't, they ain't sure gonna Packers anyway. Because, like, yeah, we would have to like be like trying to be a successful franchise, and I don't hate the Texans. Yeah, I think Texans could work. Would you be down to own the Texans, Robert? I know you're not a football guy. But... Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Sound real enthused on that. We'd be they'd build statues for us immediately. One, because we'd make them because we own the team, but also like just because we're not the McNair family. But it's also the Texans. That I mean, sure, fine. But I'll attend like one game a season. That's okay. you'd, you'd be super rich, so you'd just be flying around on your jet and going on your yacht when you're not at the game. All of that just to come down to the Texans. Just to be the Texans, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think think Texans is probably the safest bet. I just didn't know if there was another team we could figure out amongst the three of us to do other than the Rockets, but it's like, I I mean, they just got sold. Well, the problem is me and you have a wide, like, crisscrossing of teams we wouldn't want to own because we have so many different sports teams me and you like, and Robert only cares about the Astros of all sports. So that's like... (laughs) We're very we we're pretty fucking narrow in what we were gonna be able to pick in the first place. Well, I mean I'm I'm scrolling Texans. through and I'm just trying to like look at MOV franchises and all of them I'm just like the ones that I would think would be cool, you'd be like no. The ones that you might think were cool that weren't your team, I would say no. Robert found one other team in the Giants, and I was like, fuck San Francisco. I don't hate that idea. It's, it's Texans or nothing. 
and we have Texans. We would run the Texans. We'd be heroes. It's Texans. Then. We're the second Houston football franchise I owned. I've had my resume. Oh, see, conflict of interest now. I am an owner of the Packers. I don't think I can legally own two teams. No, you could. I don't think you can. You actually like have a say in that. So I don't think I. You know, I don't think we could. Like I don't. I don't think there's a single thing we could agree on. Unless we could talk Robert into Vegas, the Vegas Golden Knights. I'd rather do baseball then. I'd rather do like the Padres. I like that idea. The Padres. Yeah. I like the Padres. Let's go Padres then. I'm okay with Padres because then we can just get drunk and say lines from Anchorman. Yeah. Just talk about San Diego. Every, every other night at the ballpark would just be Anchorman night. Like, y'all just did that last week. It's like, yeah, we do it every week. Oh, I'm sorry. We do not. it every week and we love it. Who doesn't enjoy wearing a big fake mustache? We could just hire Fancy Will suits. Ferrell to call all the games. Bring their dog to the ballpark. Dog. We would do Anchorman night and then bring your dog to the park night and then Anchorman night and then bring your dog. They're like, this is well, just a repeating. It's like, does it matter? Don't don't forget about Star Wars night. Yeah, we'll mix that in there too. It's just and every we just three cancel. Days one of those. We would lose so much money on like promotional stuff. We're like, no, nope, we want Star Wars night next week. Bring it up. Like, we don't have time to get all that stuff. We had Anchorman night again. Like, well, it's Star Wars night. Figure it out. And then we cross to him, like Ron Burgundy dressed as a stormtrooper. So you just put a Star mustache on the stormtrooper helmet. I think there's something there. But also bring your dog to the park for Star Wars Anchorman night. Mm-hmm. You give away dog pajamas like Baxter had. Oh, of course. That was really cute. If somebody hits a home run nice. and all you hear is, news team, assemble. Yep. San Diego it is. San, San Diego, Diego, there we go. We got there. All right. We got, it took us a little bit. We got there. And I think we'd all, we'd all be happy with it. Yeah. Um, fun. Okay. I had, I had one more thing I, I wanted to bring to the group. Um, just shout out to everybody that gave me some positive reviews. Shower snacks went over great with the gravy gang. I had quite a few people say they tried shower snacks and they're like, you know what? Not a bad idea. Especially somebody had an apple in the shower. Like we kind of use as, as an example. And they said that it, it was delightful to not be messy. You didn't have to worry about it. Um, I then was like, how can we like shower snacks are the new wave of the future, the new shower beer, but also like, where would we store stuff? Like what if I wanted my avocado salsa or some dip that I had some, uh, some hot sauce, just whatever, whatever I wanted that in the shower at the, at the ready. I didn't want to have to bring it into the shower with me. And that's when I got the idea for a shower beer fridge, a shower beer fridge could also help elevate shower snacks because now and I'm not just talking about a shower beer fridge that like is built in because that's what the rich people do. We're making a shower beer fridge for the common man. And when I was thinking about it, what about those shower caddy things that you put your soap and your shampoo on? We just find one of those, but it's like a little mini beer fridge and you hang that on your shower head. And then you're like, oh, cool. I can get my beer. And also here's some dip that I left in here. Cool. And then you just dip right. You dip your chip right away, and you go. You go to eat in your shower snacks. I think, like, if you didn't just use it for beer, it's got places to like hold your dip, or maybe you want an ice cream sandwich in the shower. Hmm? You get you the little freezer, the freezer top part of it. You can make that work like that. I just think a shower beer fridge would elevate shower snacks in a whole different way. You would never forget. And sometimes you just see like, oh, there's a there's a beer right in front of it you know what i will have a beer i feel like that's gonna be really heavy on the shower head we'll figure it out the logistics of it but it seems like like it's doable though see in my head i was picturing and i know you said you know for the common man but i was picturing like there's just one or two tiles on the side wall you just give it a slight little tap with your elbow like fonzie and it goes like and out comes like it's like, See, a, that's like built in a fridge drawer. Yeah, I know stuff. it's built in, but I went fancy in my imagination. Okay, so just let me have this. And it's just like a crisper drawer that can hold two or three beers and a little bit of like salsa, like you said, in there. And then uh, maybe some pita chips that you kept in the fridge because you want maybe hummus. I, actually, I think shower hummus would slap. I don't disagree at all. Like, because like if your pita bread gets a little 
gets a little wet. I don't think that's a big deal at all. I don't either. I think pita bread would be the ultimate shower bread. It could be a little Slash moist. Chip. Slash chip. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, that's what, that's what I, I, I want one that like, it, it's, you don't even know it's there. Like, it's not just like a see-through door. Like some people will have on like the side of their shower. No, no I want a secret one where only if you know, if you tap this area with your elbow and then shh, you're going to have a nice beer and a little snack to enjoy while you're in there getting all sudsy wudsy. But I think you're just thinking about like the elite, like, you know, like you're thinking 1%. I'm thinking everybody. I'm thinking the 99% of people that aren't bajillionaires. I know we just talked about owning a sports franchise and yeah, you, you're thinking like you're a rich man, but I'm thinking, you know, just Joe Blow working at the factory gets off, but he wants to have a shower beer while he's cool, while, he, while he's, he's, uh, he's cleaning up from work. You know what? I will have a shower beer. Like he needs to have the ability to just hang it on the shower head and go about his business. I mean, we're also just discounting the fact that you can just put a cooler, like a little six pack cooler. You can just put a, but it's got to be like cooling shower. as well. I don't know if it'd be battery powered or what. And then here's another option. If you're thinking there's too much stress on the shower head itself, you know how um, I'm, I'm not just saying it's girls that do this, but I know that some girls have those like poles that you can like snap up and then they, it makes like shelves in the shower. They're like the add on shelves that like you like attach to the, the floor, like the, the tub and then the, the ceiling, and then that, like not a stripper pole, but that would be a benefit That's of it. That would be a benefit of it. But like, if you had about ba uh, a battery powered cooler and it's just kind of like wall, like, I don't, I don't know. It'd be shaped. Hold on, I'm going to draw it. <laughs> You're trying to put a, a lot of electronics inside of like, just kind of like wet... shaped like that where like, there's the corner, there's a quarter. Then you have, like, it'd be smaller, but you could fit a couple beers in there and your dip or your hummus. Whatever or you, you could just you bring your dip and your hummus fridge. out of the fridge into your right. shower. But then like, you know what you'd get, like the problem with that is like, yeah, shower snacks are delightful, but how many times are you going to forget? You're like, fuck. I left my salsa I was going to have in the shower in the fridge in the kitchen. And then you got to go drip across the whole apartment or house to go get it. Or you just don't get to enjoy your shower snack. Now you're like, good. I'm just going to go for this. Hey, it's a lifestyle, man. You got to be committed to it. But it's also about luxury. I think the luxury for the common man would be a portable like beer fridge for your shower. Just okay, but think about it. I don't think in it's mine a terrible now, there's a, there's a third tile in mine that I hit and a charcuterie board pops out. Again, this is for a very rich person that would be building all of these Yeah, and, and basically not this is for the big Beverly picture. Hillbillies. But you're not thinking big picture. Where, yeah, the Beverly Hillbillies, just a bunch of rednecks that got rich. Like so if I won the lottery. All of those, you got that. I'm going to build a house from the ground up. What do you want? Coolers in my shower. What? You heard me. You heard me. Make it, architect boy. Chop, chop. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you could just, like, push a button and just have, like, have a, your fridge connected to your shower somehow, so then it could just drop you a beer. Like, like Have a, them design a laundry my shoot, house maybe. so that my shower is on the back side of my refrigerator. And I just double side my refrigerator. Yeah, the two way fridge. I like that idea. That's a yeah, good idea. I was thinking like dumb waiter, but a dumb waiter would also be a great idea. I don't know the logistics of it, but like we're not architects. Architects can figure that shit out. We'd be rich, or we wouldn't yeah. be rich because we'd be for the common man. But we'd be rich because the common man bought all of our products. Fact. This is one of the many gravy tech products we're gonna have our interns. I was going to say, once on. Gravy Tech takes off, we will have this. Yeah. Investors, hit us up. Well, simply us you. Um, what did you guys have for the pre chem segment? This is one of those ones where I hope I didn't say it last week because, like, I think I wrote it down. I think I wrote it down the day after. But uh, I don't think my phone wants me to have a job. Did I talk about this last week? You did not. No. Okay, good. So. Good. Um, Every time I get to work, like, cause I plug my phone and listen to a podcast in the car on the way. As soon as I pull into my parking spot, 
my phone goes, hey, it's 23 minutes until home. Every single time. Hey, hey, 21 minutes to home. You can just turn around, be right back there, not be here. <laughs> my phone wants me to spend more time with it and less time at work. My watch does that. Like when I get in the car in the morning, it tells me like to like the vicinity, like the building I go to. It's like, hey, this is how long your commute will be. And then if I, uh, like when I used to go watch, like, like when it was soccer season last year, when I'd go to the bar to watch games, like it would, it would know like, oh, it's Saturday or Sunday morning around this time. Hey, only this far to, to Nick's place. And I was like, how do you know? And it's like, we know your routines, dumbass. No, but mine, what, when I get in the car, it doesn't tell me how long until work. It's just as soon as I get to work, it's like, hey, go home. You don't want to do this. Just leave. It's only 20 minutes. You could be you could be out of this. 20 minutes. So I'm worried that my phone is turning into uh what was that movie where Char- Scarlett Johansson was a phone and Walking Phoenix like fell in love with her? I think it was just called her. Mm-hmm. I, think, I so. think that's what my phone is trying to do to me. It might be. I think my phone wants to fuck me. Don't give in. Oh, I won't. That port is, I mean, I'm not well endowed or anything, but that charging port's a little small for me. Just saying. It may. It may want to fuck you. I think it does. I mean, understandable. But what about you, Robert? What do you got? I had a weird experience earlier this week. I went to get my car inspected to do the registration sticker. And there was a guy ahead of me who was also getting his car inspected. And when he was done, uh, he went to get his car. And I was right by the window. So I saw him get into his car. And then I saw like the mechanic tap on his windshield and tell him something I'm like, Oh, that's weird. Maybe they know each other or they had a conversation before, but when it came to my turn and my car was done getting inspected, I got in my car, mechanic type in my window. He's like, Oh, Hey, I saw, I noticed that you were driving with your high beams on. Um, you can get a ticket if you do that. So like, just watch out. I thought that was really weird. Cause I 100% know that I was not driving with my high beams on. And I don't know if this is something that he does to everyone, like as a joke, just for him or to show that like, hey, hey, we're trustworthy here. We look out for you so you can come back to us. But I thought this was like really weird. Like I, it it almost made me seem like if I was anywhere else that like he just like put something on my car to track it or was doing something like that. I don't know. It was really weird that he did that. Did you check your car for like stuff that you could have planted on it? I didn't. But you should. I should. I recommend that. You never know. Yeah. I love the idea that this guy just has an inside joke where he's just turning to the other guy. He's like, I'm going to tell him his you fucking high beams are on. You got another one, huh? Or like, what do you think? What did you, how'd you get it? <laughs> or maybe he was just being really respectful and wanted to tell you that you were nipping, but didn't want to say it out loud and embarrass you in front of the whole shop. Oh, those are your just, hey, dude, your high beams are on. He he touched the the light switch on the car, and he's like, "Oh, you had it on." I'm like I didn't. I know I didn't. <laughs> maybe maybe somebody else in the shop is playing a prank on him. In every car, they just flip the high beams on. Yeah, I I didn't know what to like what he was doing. Like, is this a joke? Do you want a tip? Are you like trying to make it seem like this business? Did he hold is his good? hand out like this. He kind of lingered a little bit. Oh, that was probably what he was doing. That may be that may be what he's doing. He's like, "Hey, I gave you a handy little tip there, and I I saved you from getting a ticket." And he's hoping everybody's like, "Oh, thank you so much," but you didn't give a fuck. You saw right through that, sort of. Did he look like Rob Schneider, and was he wearing a bellhop uniform? Great question. Uh. The mechanic was not wearing a bellhop uniform. No. Okay. Okay. Never trust a mechanic that's wearing a bellhop uniform. You don't. Bellhop no. Disguise. Unless it's Halloween. Then that's just a fun mechanic. Yeah. I guess he's having a good time. Yeah. That's why I don't ever get my car washed on Halloween. You never know. <laughs> you never know who's washing your car. I always tell everybody that. Also, you know, you don't want a bunch of teenagers trick or treating and then egging your car right after you got it washed. That too. Like, this yeah. is a brand new car. Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah. 
<laughs> that was the pre-com segment. <laughs> I also feel weird because I think last year I t- told a story about how my car broke down. So I had to take it to the mechanic. Just like I wanted him just to check to see what was wrong. And he did a bunch of stuff and tried to charge me for it. So I'm like, I can't yeah, go. Yeah, you like boss hog him. Yeah. So I'm like, and I can't go back there anymore. So this mechanic that also does inspections, I could have gone to him. He's like two minutes away from me, but like, no, I'm avoiding him now. So I went to this other place. Now this other place, I'm like, I don't know if I want to go back there anymore. So I'm just, I just, just have... go to the other place with a mustache, a fake mustache on. I'll uh... never know. <laughs> I like how Robert now has two arch nemesis. One because the the guy tried to charge him for stuff he didn't get, and the other one, this guy was just being nice, and it rubbed Robert the wrong way. So now he's in a feud with two different mechanics. <laughs> he's like Robert versus the machine. This is you know what this sounds like. This sounds like the plot of a rejected Seinfeld episode. <laughs> yeah, like the the plot of a movie that would be on. How did this get made? Yes, which is hosted George walks Fiora, into Jerry's Netflix. apartment and is just like, he told me my high beams were on, Jerry, and I know they weren't. Kramer slides in. That's the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> I've been telling you. <laughs> I don't Elaine's know. Like, maybe he was being nice. Oh, yeah. Elaine's like, I don't know. He could have just been trying to be helpful. No, no, no. I'm on to him. And no, then, but he's like, not helpful, Elaine. And then he makes Jerry go. Makes Jerry go take his car to go get it fixed. And they're like, they don't do anything to Jerry or they do do something. I told you. I told you. I'm on to him. Kramer tries to get a job there just to go undercover and unravel the whole mystery. Ends up running the whole thing. I might have to do that. Like when uh, either one of your cars inspection is due, like go to this place. See if the guy taps on your window at the end and tells you the high beams were on. You know, we should run ourselves a little past the gravy staying operation maybe. He we'll use the wrong he says it to me. He says it to me. I'm like, got you, motherfucker. You <laughs> told my friend this a day ago. He's like, uh, what? What if <laughs> this is something that he does? What if we do this experiment and it turns out he does do this? Then what? That's like a fairly harmless thing to do, though. Yeah, but why? Like, what's his end goal? Tips. Okay. He's but trying the- to revolutionize the mechanic game to see if people will give him tips on top of having to spend lots of money on their car. That's, I don't know, it's a worked, weird thing. I can't go back there when anymore. When I worked at Kroger, like, uh, like my, it was my first job I got. I was paid five twenty five an hour to do it. And like when I was uh, a bagger and then like I, I moved carts, which made me hate people that don't put carts back. But like sometimes like people would ask you to help them out to their car. And I remember there was like an older guy that had been working there for a while. He's like, you always grab the stuff on the bottom first. Those are the people that'll tip you. And I was like, I don't feel like, I feel like they're going to tip you. They're going to tip you no matter what, because you help them push their cart out there. And he's like, you always go for the stuff on the bottom. So they don't get that. And I was like, okay. And like, sometimes like, I, I mean, I would grab the stuff on the bottom just because I would help them unload their car if they wanted me to. But like, I don't, I never noticed the difference in if they were going to tip me or not. And like, they would just give you like a dollar. Sometimes you'd get somebody to give you a fiver and you're like, I'm fucking rich. <laughs> I basically just got paid an hour of work from this one guy. <laughs> I'm gonna buy good yeah. beer this weekend. And like like with a mechanic like a, a mechanic type guy, like do you tip mechanics? No. You tip like a car wash guy. Correct. But you I I always feel weird with tipping the car wash guy where it's like, here's a dollar. Like, I don't think it's like, I'm not going to hustle for a dollar, but I guess if you get $50 a day, because you tell 50 different people that their head be- high beams are on, maybe that's it. But I mean, can't get the I, I just paid out the ass for this anyways. I'm not doing that. Where I go to get my car wash, they're connect, or I mean, to get my inspection done, they're connected to a car wash. So when you're done, though, do you want the complimentary car wash in detail? And I never get it, though, because I never carry cash. Mm-hmm. But like that's that's the only like I'm not gonna have them wash my car and not tip those people when I do do it. So yeah, of course I'm gonna tip them for the car wash. You said do do. He did. <laughs> <laughs> We're rubbing off on Robert. We're affected. <laughs> he won't cuss, but we can get him on that. <laughs> do do is a cuss for Robert. <laughs> I um I my my not cool involves my car, but I was at a uh, mechanic yesterday. 
and I guess like like they they're, they're cool peeps at that place. And uh, a while back when I had been there, um, I had like they're like if you buy the, this coupon sheet, like we'll keep it here, and then every time you get any service or anything, we'll you we can deduct the, the coupons accordingly. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever, just because I was like I don't want to be rude. Um, and so I paid for like twenty five dollars or whatever it was for that coupon card. And then they're like, Hey, um, so you did have a coupon card open with us. And they like took like $45 off of what I paid for. And I was like, this is tight. And it felt like it was a brand new thing. I was like, I didn't even remember I had that. Oh yeah. You could have just not told me any of that, but they had it on file. And I was like, I have a file here. Integrity. Regular. Yeah. Big of them. There are good mechanics out there. That's what we're saying here, guys. And sometimes they're overly good mechanics. They're really just going to turn your high beams on and try and get you to give them a tip. Doesn't that mean like there's like a, it's like a gang initiation? They're like, if somebody has their high beams on, don't flash your high beams at them because then they're going to kill you. I have heard that. It's never stopped me before because either one, I get you to turn your high beams off. Two, you don't turn them off and then I get to bitch about that. And you know me, I run on anger. Or three, that's true and they kill me. And then mm. that's the biggest plus out of all of them. No more bills. No more bills win 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 situation yeah or That's i get to is. have my walking tall moment where i just they come after me and i just kick the shit out of all of them and then they write a movie about me and i'm rich win 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 yeah situation. at that point i'm basically liam neeson and i took out the whole gang yeah so i think i could do it's be good it'd be good to be liam neeson yeah like nobody fucks with him in general right now. They'd have uh, to. You see what that guy did? Yeah, and it was a movie. Like, well, I except, risk it. except they wouldn't cast a fat guy because people would be like, that's unbelievable. So the, it would just be like Miles Teller playing me. And I'd be like, I'd hey. like it if they did cast a fat guy. Right? But I want to be a fat guy that used to, or a, a not fat guy that used to be a fat guy, but they have to gain the weight back. So Jonah Hill. Like, Jonah Hill or Chris Pratt, like, but you got to go back to fat Chris Pratt. He's like, why? It's like, it's for a role. That's what I was just thinking. Like, of course, it's going to be somebody older than me, too. Let's just make it Stavros Halkius. Let's just have him play me in a movie. He's fatter, balder, like has less teeth. I don't like his laugh. But I don't think. Oh, I love it. That is. Oh, well, fuck. Everybody look him up. He's fucking hilarious. He's an, also an absolute dirtbag like me. So it works. All right, then. Yeah. Well, that was our pre-com segment, guys. Um, yeah. And let's move on now to the Comeback Kids segment. We'll tell you what's back in the news this week, according to us, at least. It is brought to you by our good friends at Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world. Pat and I are heading up with the boys to the lake this weekend. And um, they were, everybody was just in the group chat before the pod was like, Hey, I'm going to bring some burgers. I'll bring some dogs. I'm going to bring this. I'll bring this. Like everybody's kind of chiming on with their brain. And I was like, I have about six cases or six 24 packs worth of Southern star that I will be bringing because Southern star is awesome. And uh, I think that should be good for at least a day or so on the lake. And um, yeah, it is. It's the best like summer beer. I know summer is winding down, so it's the best year round beer, but uh, we got, Four twenty fours of uh, strawberry bombshell blondes, my personal favorite Southern oh. Star beer. That's going to be great to be sipping on a lake, on a boat, wherever you may be this week. And shout out to was it Noe that had tagged us? Uh, we always tell you guys if you're drinking a Southern Star, tag us at Passing Ray Pod. Use hashtag or just you don't have to use hashtag. Just tag up, ta- tag us and uh, send us a picture of you drinking your Southern Star. I think Noe was he in Mexico drinking it. Like he was like, dude, doesn't matter where I go. I'm bringing Southern Star with me. It might not have been. Mexico. I thought he was in Florida. Florida, same place, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Close enough. Um, but yeah, he was out of town, another state, and he's uh, he's crushing some Southern Star. So shout out to him. Uh, yeah, at Pass Gray Pod, at Southern Star Brewing Co., and at Southern Star BC. Tag us on Instagram and on Twitter. Let us know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast. Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world. We got the office trivia night coming up. Uh, not this Friday, but August 19th, going down at Kobo's Q. Southern Star is going to be doing a beer tap takeover. So come have some of the best beer in the world while we do our office trivia as well. 
it's gonna be awesome and uh just Ch- southern star brewing company N- nothing wrong with that if you're drinking you're soaking up those last couple of days by the pool before maybe going back to school or or work if you're a teacher or whatever it is you can always take a southern star can to the pool they don't make anything in beer bottle or in bottles everybody else they got bottles out there and they'll be like, oh hey no bottles at the pool you're never gonna have to worry about that with southern star because they're the first to can craft in texas and they exclusively can everything that they put out there what are you gonna say pat and say so also this saturday 8 a.m to 11 a.m they're having their uh, brewing 5k beer run show up you run we all know running's awful but some of you sickos actually enjoy it but uh the run starts and finishes right at the brewery nice and easy you don't have to go finish up somewhere and then still be trucked back or run farther to get all the way back there it's a shady course through the neighborhood so you're not just on the side of the road fucking dying in the heat and luckily it's also nice. early so that'll be a little bit earlier and once you cross the finish line you get a souvenir pint glass and up to four eight ounce pours of your choice of beer so whatever your favorite beers are up there they, they got some experimentals up on tap you know they try always got all. something they're messing around with try it all and then guess what if you want to get a couple more after that do it and you're getting a souvenir pint glass why wouldn't yeah. you do it 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. Yeah, they've always got the best food out there. 3525 North Fraser Street in Conroe. You shirt? get a cool race shirt. doesn't want to go. Go for the shirt alone. But yeah, address Registration is, 35- is at runintexas.com backslash star. Sorry, that's the last thing. Did we give the address? Okay. It's 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. Go up there. Let them know you're part of the gravy gang. We got a PTG flag hanging by where you get your tokens. Even if you don't have to get the tokens because you were running in the in the 5K, let them know you're part of the gravy gang. They'll hook you up. They'll uh, let you try the beers that you're asking for. And uh, you get a little sample of each before uh, you make your decision so you don't feel like you missed out on them. But Southern Star Brewing Company, truly something for everybody up there, no matter what it is. They got all kinds of options. Southern Star Brewing Company, best beer in the entire world, and the official beer sponsor of Pass the Gravy and the Comeback Kids segment. It's the Comeback Kid. The Comeback Kid of the Week. The Comeback Kid of the Week. Bitch. Our first comeback kid this week, guys, is Hot Wiring Cars. Hot Wiring Cars is back. Grand Theft Auto, sort of back too, because I think you can steal a car if you hot wire it. But um, the talk, TikTok, which passed the gray pod on TikTok, if you haven't followed us there yet. Um, the kids, the Gen Zers, the youngins on the street now, they're uh, apparently. Um, do you want to know how to hotwire a Kia or Honda? Yeah. Well, you got to use a USB. Go on TikTok. They'll show you. Uh, use a USB to hotwire the car. Follow their instructions. And then, boom, you got a car. And that had been happening quite a bit after people saw that. And then people's cars were getting stolen. So sucks if you have a Kia or a Honda because apparently it can be just hotwired by using a USB. I don't know how. I didn't look it up. But. I did see it. There's people that like some kids ran into like a median on a freeway and were just trying to run away. Like, oh, oops, we were just doing this. We didn't realize it would work. We were testing out. It's like, it's still, st- it's still stealing a car. It still is illegal, even if you were just testing it out. It's literally Grand Theft Auto. I was just trying to see if this gun shot and I can't believe it shot somebody. It's like, well, still illegal. Now you know. I'm watching this video. This is hilarious. It's absolutely they're just like, yeah. They're running down the road in a cop. It's not a cop car. It's like an SUV. It's just kind of trailing right behind them. The, the kid got tw- like not even not even 50 yards down the highway, ran back towards the medium, and now he's just walking because he's out of gas. This is hilarious. Yeah, but you can you can hotwire cars by using USBs now. Um, shout out to me for not having a Kia or Honda, but uh sucks if you do because Toyota gang. You're at risk. So, uh, yeah, hot wiring cars back in a big way. Watch your kids, you know, it's the youths these days, hot wiring all kinds of shit. Damn youths. Like, just they need to make that in like a movie, like, shit, we need a getaway car. And some guy's like pulling out his USBs, like, I got this. <laughs> Don't worry, oh, gang. I can get us out of this situation. I got a USB. Um, so yeah, Hot Wine Cars is back. Another comeback kid we got this week is Pete Rose. Pete Rose is, uh, he had himself a weekend. Um, he was 
like he was on a, the Phillies broadcast. I didn't know they let him back yet, but yeah, he, he was banned from baseball for life for gambling on it. They kind of eased some of his restrictions. The Phillies were welcoming him back as part of a, a, a world series winning team. And so they brought him in the booth and I think it took off like 30 seconds before he said shit and fuck like within a 20 second span of time. He also and said, like, he said that the pitch that. was right down the cock. Cockeyed. He called it cockeyed. Oh no! I heard one where he said, "Right down the cock." He might have. So he was throwing cock out there. He was throwing shit and fuck, um, all in the span of not even a minute. And you could just tell they were like, "Oh God, Pete, what are you, what are you doing? What? Oh, I, I look at your face. I don't understand." But like, Pete Rose's voice is just like a drunk guy at all times. Whenever you hear him talk, it's just like somebody's drunk. Hey, hey, how are you doing there, buddy? And like, all right, and he, Uncle uh, Pete, calm down. He was interviewed by some woman that uh, a female reporter was asking about statutory rape charges um, from years ago. He was like, that was 55 years ago, babe. But he called her babe. And they were like, how misogynistic is this? That he brushed off rape charges and then called her babe. And I was like, I mean, it's Pete Rose. What did you expect Pete Rose to do right there? Honestly, I'm not justifying it, but it's like, no, that's Pete Rose. He's a pervert. He's a weirdo. He's not the best behaved guy. Um, you you don't you don't have like uh you don't have a diamond thief come check out your diamond store and then get mad when you got robbed by the diamond. Like, you know, you don't invite him to come in there and be like, how the fuck do you do this? Yeah, it's P. Rose still lives in 1978. Like yeah, his, his brain just... has never evolved past that. He's still he's a degenerate gambler. He's like, whatever. I don't have to do anything better because I'm just more money's going to keep coming in because I'm Pete Rose. I still call women toots and babe and doll. Which toots it, like is funny all the time. Me and my buddies in our, in our group chat, it doesn't work as much like on text, but like every time we're hanging out, like um, my friend Ty and I was on this weekend. It was just like, what's up toots. Like we use that, that lingo all the time around each other. And it's like, it is kind of funny to like refer to a chick as toots, even though it's like, looked at as misogynistic but it's like is if you're basically what's that thoughts, huh? it's like when we, when we say broads we're, we don't really call girls broads but we're just talking amongst ourselves but it's like a sarcastic little like i don't know you're gonna bring a broad or no you're gonna be staggered you got you get the broads coming it's a toots funny is- term and when like you were in that that era like yeah it flew but like toots is just like come on you're mad at toots if you had used no. toots i don't think there's backlash toots is fun to say but it's exponentially funnier if you say it and they get actually offended by it. But it's, I didn't, I didn't say, Hey, cunt, get over here. I said, toots. Would you like, have said that to a male reporter though? Like that's, I get, I get the argument. So what we do need to do is we need to start calling all people that are reporting on us. Like just start, start using those pet names. Like what's up, sweetheart. And it's just like Pat asking me a question um yeah anybody else yeah you sweetheart you're like um i have a question about today's game yeah toots go (laughs) and it's like if you call everybody toots or sweetheart i think that it plays i just i don't we gotta we gotta gotta, we gotta make it like a blanket thing i think it's just funny to watch people get pissed off by things you call them so whatever works the best is what i say go for but also stopping short of you know racial stuff don't do that Absolutely. Absolutely. But also just like if if just like um I don't know who's give me if Mike Trout was like, Yeah, sweetheart, what you got? And it was just like a dude reporter, I think it'd be really funny if like he he just calls everybody that and then you have an out of town reporter ask him something and then he's like, Yeah, sweetheart. She's like, Can you believe Mike Trout called me sweetheart? It's like, well, he actually literally says that to everybody in the press conference. You just weren't paying attention, didn't do your research. It's called journalism. Toots, look it up. He's also worth $450 million. So go ahead and just roll with it and maybe try and marry him. That's what I would do. Mike Trout called me sweetheart. Married. I'd be like, oh. That probably would too. Good he looking likes- dude. Strong jawline. I mean, I'd call you sweetheart, especially today. I'd call you sweetheart any day. You look good. Thanks, man. Yeah, you look like you got a little trimmed up a little bit. Got a little haircut. Yeah. You're getting all pretty for the boys. Look at this. Uh, well, I got the, I got to do like the wedding haircut. So like, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with it for a month out. I'm getting married in uh, one month from today as we're recording this. How about that? Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. 
Well, Alex is growing up. Well, Alex is growing up on you. Um, but yeah, I just want to look good for the boys too, you know? So they're making they can be calling me toots all weekend. Hey, toots. Oh, yeah, we're going to tie you to a chair. and Don't do that. Oh, no, it's – I'm just going to tell you because there's nothing you can do to stop it because you're small and can't handle your alcohol. We're going to tie you to a, straight, a chair, and then I'm going to be the stripper. This is not going to be fun for you. Well, that'll be fun. I'm going to be twerking in your face. You're going to get pink eye. No pink I'll wear goggles. Oh, I, I will shake them off. Please don't get any pink eye. I can't miss that. Much. I'm going to have to – if I take off for the honeymoon, I got to – I can't miss any other days, you know. Pink eye doesn't last that long. You'll be okay. Hmm. I do a lot of podcasts that people watch. I don't want to have pink eye on it. Eh, wear glasses. Look, sweetheart. Please don't give me the pink eye. Hey, don't worry those, about it. Like, puts, I've got it all covered. Those those like blackout sunglasses that you did when you had your eye injury. <laughs> Get you the old Robert. Uh, well, oh fuck, what was his I name? All the bulls back in the day, the Rex Specs. Oh, the Rex Specs would be tight. But yeah, Pete Rose is back. Um, yeah, it's kind of a scumbag dude. Scumbag dudes do it. Like when you invite a scumbag to come do something and then he acts like a scumbag. Kind of on you, Phillies. But like, I mean, what a perfect Philadelphia guy. Philadelphia is filled with scumbags. It's true. They threw batteries at Santa. Um, People don't forget. They did throw batteries at Santa. Um, but yeah. Pete Rose, comeback kid this week. And then the last one I had was the Little League World Series. Because uh, get ready, guys. We already had our first viral moment in the Little League World Series um, where just, you know, sometimes there's things that are bigger than sports, guys. All right? There's things that are bigger than sports. There was a kid got hit by a pitch. And the pitcher was like, oh, man, I hit a guy. And then the, the kid went and hugged him. He was like, you're doing, you're doing fine, kid. Don't worry about it. I'll be okay. And it's like, yeah sweet sportsmanship moment and i don't really think the kids are putting anything on it's uh we haven't got it yet but it's the the coach that's gonna go up to a kid at some point he's like look you gave it all you had it doesn't matter that you gave up a three-run home run in the bottom of is it the sixth inning they play they played the sixth inning i don't know in the bottom of the sixth inning to lose the game it doesn't matter you gave it your all and i'm proud of you and it's gonna make you an incredible young man like, and then that goes viral. It's like, this coach gets it. It's like, he also knows he's mic'd up. So he, he thought that might, thought that might go viral and it did. So come on guys. Um, no, I mean, not all of those are intentionally done like that, but there's definitely the guys that ham it up and you're like, come on, dude. You were looking at the camera the entire way to the pitcher's mound. We knew what you were doing there, but then also watching little kids cry when they lose. It's kind of like, I'm an asshole, but it's, it's always entertaining. You're like, Oh, fuck you, Curacao. I hated I hated the whole situation of the kid beating the guy and then the guy go the kid going out to help. Like, first of you all, you should charge the mound, buddy. Charge so the fucking all, mound. Do you have any idea how many kids I hit in the head when I pitched in Little League? Yeah, kids don't know how to pitch well. Um, usually. No, but here's the thing. I threw really hard, so I was effective when I was that young, but I also had no idea where it was going. I think my record in one game was five hits bat hit batsmen, two of them were in the head. And I used to hit people in the head. Just paying quite people. Lot. Dude, I was just drill. Like I would I would walk slash hit the bases loaded and then strike out the side. Nobody knew what the fuck was gonna happen when I had the ball, but it was probably I bet you I was more exciting to watch than any other kid out there. Cause parents were like, Oh, watch this kid's gonna get hit hard. <laughs> as somebody that as somebody that but, doesn't but, have like, kids, I don't give a fuck about little league baseball. Okay. But do I watch Little League Baseball if there's nothing else on and it's the middle of the afternoon? Yeah, I'll throw it on because I kind of am like, maybe this kid's going to just fucking lose control, get hit. And then there's always the kid that can just hit six home runs in a game. You're like, why are we still pitching him? Huh? What's going on? This kid is obviously 20 years old. He has a, he has a full grown beard. Like that kid, that kid's, no, it's not fair. Yeah. I mean, like, my thing is, so, so one, I, there's no way I would have cried if I hit a kid in the head. I would have been like, oh, give me a new ball. Next batter. Oh, he's crying. Get him up off the fucking dirt. Put him on first base or take him out of the game. We got a game. Let's go. Two, if I was the one that got hit and the other kid starts crying, I'm not consoling you. You're the enemy. I'm trying to beat you. Oh, you're crying so you can't pitch anymore? Good. Get off the fucking mound. Get out of your goddamn mind. Plus, yeah, all the ridiculous dingers they hit now, move back the fences. These kids are, what, 10 to 12? They're already full-time training. What like, is they're this, already softball? doing weights at that age now. Move oh, the fences back. Softball. 
It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, Little League is it's a joke. Also, I I, I, I I also remember at that age, <laughs> by the time you're old It'd enough, it'd be a play, joke if we played it. And they'd probably yeah, no, still strike us out. But like, no, I get at that age why they're playing on that size field. But there's the people that different definitely hit like growth spurts early. Like the kid that you'd have in middle school that was like on a team of basketball because he grew like a foot over the summer. Like, well, that guy's yeah, he can dunk. <laughs> he had his growth spurt before everybody. No, but I mean, there are like oh, there's so many home runs hitting it now compared. Like kids are just training better for the sport. The fences need to be moved back a little bit. It just is what it is. So you got to evolve the game at that young. Plus, bat bat technology is better. You can hit it farther. You got to keep up with the game. But also, hit more kids. It's funny. I saw just one get kid ready said his dream for those job, viral moments because that's what's coming. There was there was one kid who said his dream job was to be a chicken nugget tester. And I was just like, dude, I want one kid to have the balls just be like, dream job, booby toucher. They probably would not put that on ESPN, though. But what if they did? Come I mean, on. It's owned by Disney, so probably not. I mean, everybody likes boobs. But I bet all that stuff is from, like, they have, like, a questionnaire that they give all the kids, and then it's, like, if your first answer is not acceptable, they just go to whatever your second answer was. Yeah. I mean, just no kid's ever going to be as cool as Big Al. Favorite subject in school. I was the kid that was just like, I hit dingers. Hi, my name is Big Al, and I hit dingers. He had a fucking voice deeper than I did when he was 10. He was also 240 pounds at 10 years old. Not quite um, that. But. So, yeah, Little League World Series is back. But going back to, like, the hitting the hitting guys with pitches, like, yeah, kids are wild, and, like, they're figuring out how to throw. So, yeah, that's going to happen. I always feel like, though, like, it would it make sense to, like, to me, like, where they're, like, these pitchers are, like, like talking about guys like throwing at, at batters and stuff. Like I always thought like, it's weird that there's not like a rule that like, not like saying you're ejected, but just taking out, like, not like you're fine or anything, but it's like in the MLB, if you hit like three guys in a game, like if your coach, if, if you if your manager doesn't come to take you out, like you should be like removed from the like, pitching, right? Like there should be like a rule with like, all right, dude, you get three hit batsmen. Like, come on. You hit, no, you hit three guys already. But I always feel like it like would fuck with the other team. Or with, with that team, because then it's like now they got to go warm up somebody if you weren't going to take them out. Like if your starter hits two guys in the first inning, like you can only hit one more guy. Fuck. Like I think it puts pressure on people. You know, you know what? Actually, I just thought about this. The weirdest thing about the Little League World Series is what is the number one thing that's talked about in youth sports that parents are absolute shitheads and are just constantly yelling at the referees? You don't see that at the Little League World Series. Oh, we probably just don't see it because they don't show it but like it's definitely there i don't think so i've never watched one because you can hear the crowd you never hear dads absolutely losing their shit on umpires but a lot of times i think they know they're on camera now so it's like we i like you gotta clean it up like i bet you there's like on every little league team it's like fucking thank god we're on espn mikey's parents are gonna have to shut the fuck up his mom is always yelling at the umpire. His dad's always like, "You fucking pieces of shit." If, if Mikey was batting, he'd be he'd be hitting dingers right now. Like, there's always like there are those people, but now there's like they're like, "Dude, we can hear everything that's going on." I don't think it would stop those kind of parents. Being Put your baseball camera. earrings on, mom. Put your kid's number on your cheek, and just smile and cry if he does something great. Like, if I had made it to the Little League World Series and something happened, you for sure would hear my dad call somebody a douchebag from the stands. And my dad wasn't the most overly loud parent that was always yelling. But if it warranted it, my dad would yell. Well, I bet he would. Yeah. David Dion is afraid of no camera. We should go to the Little League World Series and just try and, like, act like we're parents there. They just dress up in, like, whatever the, like, they pick one team and just like cry and like try and go viral for like doing something. It's like, they're not actually. I mean, I definitely, I definitely could have passed for big Al's father a couple of years ago. You guys want to go yeah. to where a bunch of kids are and pretend that you're one of their parents. Yeah. Well, like better. Well, like not to like, not like interact with the kids, but just like, like put like a random number, like just put like number 12. And it's like, even if there's not a 12, but like, Oh my God, these boys are just so great. 
Or better yet, no, forget that. Yes, let's interact with them. I want to try and catch interviews no, I don't want to interact with these kids. <laughs> I don't I, no, want I to try and catch interviews with these kids. Fine, you fuck off. I'll get the interviews. And I'm like, hey, do they tell you what to say? Like, what is your actual job that you would like to have? And I bet half the kids would be like, porn star, booby toucher. And I'd be like, yeah, these are the real hard-hitting questions. Just because you're 10 doesn't mean you don't deserve to have your voice be heard. Just go to the Lily World Series and run a sports book. Oh, you know that's you know parents that's are gambling. Going on. That's yeah, on. that's why th- those are the asshole parents. They're just betting on the games. When yeah, you get to the World World League World Series. But yeah, World Series for for the little league kids are uh, back. So get ready for a bunch of some things are bigger than sports. Maybe the maybe the adults should act this way. Yeah, but also um, remind us that whenever somebody has, it's a walk off. Um, let me know and send me a screenshot of it. So then we're like, fucking, he had a buzzer. You can see. Look, he's got a buzzer. He's got a buzzer. Show, like, show, show me. He's got a buzzer. You can tell. You can clearly tell he's got a buzzer. Also, we'll, yearly reminder. We'll get the heat off the Astros and then just turn it on like some like fucking Pensacola, Florida, Little League kids. And they're like, what? I didn't do any of this. <laughs> he's got uh, his phone in his pocket. Me. His phone in his pocket. <laughs> that's, the, that's the pirates you got to worry about, but it's not working for him. I, uh, I have to say my yearly reminder that all these kids in the Little League World Series, most of them aren't the best players in their area because if they were good enough, they'd be on full-time traveling teams at this time, uh, at that age, and no longer playing in the Little League. So Really? Yeah. I, I didn't play Little League anymore by the time I was that age. My brother didn't. All my friends didn't. You're on just traveling teams at that point. At like like we, would, we were at Baseball USA. Now, of course, that's not going to be everywhere in the country because it also depends on like population density and how good it is Income in your area. But quality. That Alex, that that's just what they just told him. They told him that he's too good for uh, little yeah, league. Like, yeah, you yeah. need to go to the little league. Yeah. I got kicked out for hitting too many kids in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Pat didn't make the All Star team. But don't worry, no, you, you're, we're going to go here. I was All Star every goddamn year, dude. I was, was sick that, was everybody at an child, dude. Dude, I was I was so sick when I was a kid. He was jealous. <laughs> Those are my glory days, bro. My glory days. I peaked at twelve. <laughs> but like, the truth is, like, some of these kids are going to peak right here. And I was like, well, like, what was the kid my... that was like, which one, like, the Dominican kid that like lied on his birth certificate, and then it was like Danny Almonte. There you go, pro. He made it to the minors. He kind of peaked at that point. If you think about it. Yeah. I peaked sexually and athletically at 12 years old. <laughs> I peaked athletically probably at 12 years old. That was <laughs> my athletic peak. Um, but yeah, that was our comeback kid segment this week. I got one um, more. Oh, you got one? Okay. What you got? I got one more. Um, Brittany Griner? No. Well, I mean, I'm pretty heartbroken that we won't be able to watch her for nine more years. I mean, you know how big of a Phoenix Mercury fan I am. I always Dude. watch the Mercury games. I mean, first, like Diana Taurasi out for this season. My fantasy team is fucked with no Griner and Taurasi this year. Oh, yeah. Also, RIP in peace, Olivia Newton-John. And Fig Newtons. Fig Newtons are gone? She was related to Isaac Newton, who invented the big Newton. Oh, fuck you. Okay, uh, my comeback kid for the week, though, is uh, T-shirts. Now, this also might not be for another year, guys. we got to get your feedback on this. I had a T-shirt idea today. It was no shirt, no shoes, no condoms. Now, while I find that just to be a hilarious T-shirt for year-round, I think it might do better numbies if we sell it for Father's Day next year. Um, okay. Um, but just first, when, when you think of t-shirts, I like to like, you know, just in my brain, which is, you know, just, I'm not shooting it down. Just, I like to think like, how often will people wear this? What kind of person? See, this is what the people at work said to me too. Where are you going to wear that out in public? Uh, Walmart. (laughs) Walmart. Great, Great example though. Walmart family reunions or just any family function um <laughs> block parties for the july doing the yard 
I mean, when's not like Monster well, I Jam? Said to somebody and he was like, dude, yeah, if I wasn't a married father of three, I would wear that. And I was like, that's the reason to wear that's it for because you, yeah. they wouldn't be here if if you wore yeah, condoms. He's your demographic and he's already shooting it down. So it's not saying a lot. I, hold on. I it. turned him though. Cause he goes, I can't wear that to a five-year-old's birthday party. I was like, yeah, you can. The parents will laugh and the nope, kids won't get don't. it. And he was like, well, that's a good point. But then they'll ask their parents. They're like, what is condoms? And you're, then the parents are like, God damn it. Why'd you have to wear I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, Todd, Josh, and Mikey would all buy that shirt. So we sell three so shirts. Three of them. I said, that's just off the top of my head. I'm going to I don't think, I don't even know if they all would. Like the same people that would wear that shirt are the same people that wear like the the two seater shirt where it's got an arrow to their face and an arrow to their penis and it's like get it, Blo- <laughs> like like here's my Brett, breathalyzer Brett blow totally on this shirt. and it's got an arrow down to your penis. Brett Brandon would totally also. That's four. Like you know, Josh. And, like would. ironically, but like not out in public all the time. Oh, who wears the same shirt out in public all the time? No, but. They would buy it. They would wear it. At least I around like the, house. the enthusiasm. I just think <laughs> Sergio. I think Sergio would wear one. Pat, the enthusiasm is there. You know, just, just gotta a plus for enthusiasm. Focus it. I'm gonna make this shirt myself. Focus it in other I, areas. I. You know what? I. I feel like we. What if we made it and it's like if we sell ten, Pat, you can. We'll keep it in the store, but it can't be from the same address. Like somebody can't just go buy 10 because you can't buy 10. I'll buy my dad. My dad would fucking wear that shirt. I guarantee it. He got a vasectomy 15, 20 years ago. Sick. Yeah. No more condoms for Mr. Neon. Sure idea. Got a vasectomy, bitches. <laughs> Guys Dude, through vasectomies. Oh you know, everybody what? has a vasectomy. What if we partnered with a doctor's office? It's like no shirt, no shoes, no condoms on the back. It said like cuddles vasectomies or whoever the fuck it is. Cuddles vasectomies would be a great vasectomy place. It's a Tuttles. I don't know why Tuttle was the uh, name. I thought, they said cuddles. Cuddles. I thought you said Cuddles too. But like if we partnered with a doctor's office that specialized in men's vasectomies, does the there's a shirt idea, cuddles vasectomies. And it's like it looks like a love's gas station. <laughs> Just... Ooh. But not cuddles with a D with a T. Cuddles. Cuddles vasectomies. No, I liked cuddles better. It's a cuddlefish. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. The fish. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it would sell more cuddles vasectomies shirts. I'm, just, I'm disappointed in you two. I think this shirt idea is going to get a overwhelmingly positive reaction on Twitter. People would, some people would buy it. I don't think as many people as you think would buy it, though. Yeah, they might think well, it's funny, but not actually buy it. Oh, they they would support it. I see a lot of funny shirts, but then I just like I like, I wouldn't wear that. But also, if we promoted the shit out of it and like on facebook that's the kind of shirt that does well on facebook just the trash at walmart the go outside of walmart and sell it on like a a table oh well no you got to get into facebook marketplace for like you get it going on facebook that walmart contacts you mm, there you go yeah now you're thinking with your head now you're thinking business walmart's in birmingham alabama just stocked up with thousands of those shirts they'd love that they would love that. Go to an Alabama Crimson Tide game. And the, like, Hell the yeah, champion, wear that. The Panhandle of Florida, just those shirts as far as the eye can see. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fuck shirts. you guys. I think it's a great shirts. idea. Come back, kid. <laughs> no, Why didn't you do that in the pre-com segment? You should have done the pre-com segment. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I didn't do it there. I just did Instead it. of doing shirts, and then it's a shirt that doesn't exist yet. Well, it will. Once you guys see the engagement we get, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a mock of this shirt. And we'll I'm make post a prototype. It. Go buy those iron-on letters and make one, and let's see. Wear it around for a couple of days. We'll see how how much feedback you get on it. Oh, what if I wore it to work, but just like kept the lettering small, so it was behind my apron all the time, and just would like show people. Like a, okay. like, a, 
uh, not like a flasher. You'd flash them, but it'd be with the shirt. Yeah. Just pull my Seems apron predatory. to the side, like, huh? <laughs> what if I cut out a hole in my apron right where my dick is? And then I just stick my finger out so I think it's my dick, but it's not my dick. That's not a bad idea. Maybe we should sell those aprons. And it says, kiss the cook right around the hole. See, that would be the same people would buy that your shirt idea as that, too. There you go. All right. Well. I, should, I should just do marketing for trash t-shirt companies. <laughs> Go to like a boardwalk. And they'll be like, yes, that's a great one. Was it F- Finesty or whatever? The fucking Finesty, that's it. That's who I should work for. I don't know if they'd want that, but it's worth a try. Oh, they want worth it. Worth a try for sure. Um, You know what else is worth a try? Going and checking out Paul Shear. He's going to be in Houston this weekend, August 14th at 713 Music Hall, or as he refers to it as 713 music hall um but paul Shear from many many things he does host the how did this get made podcast they look at bad movies and uh and kind of just discuss them um he'll tell you the movie they're gonna be watching this sunday at 713 music hall if you want to if you want to get tickets you can get them at paulshear.com i'm gonna say all this i always repeat myself as i'm setting up a po- uh, an interview and then you're just gonna hear me say it again so just just bear through that but um he is from the league he's been on parks and rec He's been on all kinds of things, um, and I'm going to get to talk to him about that here in just a second. Uh, but Paul Shear is brought to you by Office Trivia Night. Pass the gravy, Office Trivia Night at Kobo SQ going down Friday, August 19th. That is a Friday, one Friday away. Like, not this coming Friday, one Friday away from this week. Uh, Kobo SQ, first time we've done any event at Kobo SQ, but I've been to Kobo SQ many times. Best food in town and uh, the brisket mac and cheese quesadilla. Oh my God. The Berea tacos. Oh my God. You are not going to regret it. Just come for the food alone. If you don't watch The Office, just come hang out and uh, have some Southern Stars. Southern Stars doing a tap takeover there. And it's going to be a great time for everybody. We're going to have some office trivia. Grand prize is going to be something pretty awesome. We're going to announce that on next week's podcast. And uh, yeah, some of the best food on the planet, the best beer on the planet, the best show on the planet. Do a little trivia, test out your knowledge. I've got like my, I'm, I'm really debating on whether or not the, the entire last round is just going to be on ones that like no one's going to get. Do I it. don't know. I don't know. That I have a couple famous. like bonus questions for like, if it goes to like overtime, if it's tied. And then those are just like, you're really going to have to know. But um, I, I don't know. I've been, I've, I've been really having some fun rewatching episodes and, and coming up with questions just on that. Like there's all kinds of office trivia books you can buy and games you can buy. None of this is from those. They're all, what I mean, if- it's, it's, it's possible. Some of them are on those, but like all of these are questions. Like I'm watching the show and I, I put in the little app on my phone here. This is what I got. And yeah, that's what, that's what we're going to be getting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Pat, and Robert are also going to be there. I'm going to need you guys to help keep score because it's, I know keeping score was a pain in the ass last time and Emma will not be there to help us keep score. So uh, we're going to need you guys to help us keep score for that. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you, you got to buy, buy, buy some Kobos, get some beer. We're going to, we're going to like not require you. To, there's no like entry fee, but like buy a meal. Don't just come and not spend any money there. Like give them, you know, buy, buy some food, help make Kobos, make it worth their while let's pack that bitch let's make it a lot of fun and uh we're gonna hang out afterwards we're gonna have some beers with you like i'm, I'm excited i think we're gonna do three rounds of this maybe in overtime if we gotta go to that then we're gonna award our, our grand prize and then we're gonna hang out with you guys until uh they kick us out of there so it's gonna be a lot of fun we can watch astros braves a rematch of the world series that they're, they're gonna be in atlanta so they'll have that up on the on the tvs as well and uh yeah kobo's q it's never not been a great time the best food on the planet the best beers on the planet Passing baby office trivia night brought to you by Kobo's Q and us. That's the official sponsor of this Paul Shear interview that we're going to play for you guys right now. What's going on, guys? It's Alex P. Middleton from the Rod Ryan Show and Pass Great Podcast. And I am very excited to be joined today by uh, actor, comedian, and uh, somebody who will be at 713 Music Hall. He's going to be doing a live recording of his podcast, How Did This Get Made? It's Paul Shear. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm excited to be coming to the 713 Music Hall. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, I've, I haven't gotten to see one of your live shows, but I love the concept of it where you just watch a bad movie and you talk about it. Because that is just kind of like, everybody's done that for ages and you're just like looking at it more in depth. I love that. 
Well, yeah. So we've been doing this podcast for 12 years and we were doing podcasts before people even knew what a podcast mm -hmm. was. And we love that idea that like, this is the conversation that you would have with your friends after you watch like a really terrible movie. Like this is the conversation at the diner or the conversation in the living room. And what we have done over the 12 years is done the show, you know, as a podcast. And then slowly but surely over those years, we started doing live shows and we're all live performers. We are comedians and we treat our live shows completely different. Like you're going to get a completely different experience. I think a lot of these podcasts that go on the road, it's just like watching uh, three people just record a podcast live. That is an element of it, but we go longer. We do things with the audience. It's a full experience. We don't want to, we know the people are coming out. We know that money is tight. And so we try to put on a big, fun, uh, silly show. What are you guys going to be uh, talking about on, on the Sunday show, August 14th at 713 Music Hall? You know, that is a great question because uh, we're talking about so many movies. Let me look right now on my own, my own website to see what we're looking at. Uh, all right. On the 14th, oh, we're watching Open Windows, which is Elijah Wood and Sasha Gray. And if people oh, nice. are fans of our podcast, uh, they know that we did this movie. It was kind of like speed in with a piano. A guy was forced to play a piano as fast as he could or he'd be assassinated. And it's the same director, same writer and same star, Elijah Wood. Uh, he didn't direct and write it. And Sasha Gray. And I think it's a, about because I haven't watched it. I watched it right before the show uh, about a guy who uh, sees a woman being attacked on his computer window like it's like rear window via computers it's so stupid and i can't wait uh for it because this is kind of like a callback episode this is like a fan favorite episode so we are going to do the the sequel to it with it which is open window so there's your homework if you guys want to go out there and you get your tickets i saw at your website uh for that for mm -hmm. this coming sunday um i got i'm gonna ask you about the league because i posted that you're gonna be on the show and all yeah. i got were just were just andre quotes but i had uh selfishly i gotta ask you about uh, the greatest the greatest event in television history because when i was in college man that like i remember seeing that being like what the fuck is this and i loved it oh like, man yeah how did how did that come to be? That was with like everybody else that ended up being on Parks and Rec. I feel like you had fucking Jeff Probst on there. Like, how did that come to yeah. be a thing? Oh, oh, wow. OK, I thought you were talking about the time we took over MTV for 24 hours. No. So this greatest event in the history of television, Adam Scott and I um, teamed up on Adult Swim to make these recreations of old sitcom theme songs. Now I had already been doing my show NTSF SDSUV, which is a parody of like CSI and NCIS. Mm -hmm. And so Adult Swim really let us make whatever we wanted to do. And Adam had this idea to recreate stuff. So we started working on these like little mini scripts about this amazing recreation. So at the end of every episode, you would watch, uh, you know, the recreation of Bosom Buddies. We had Billy Joel come in to not, Billy Joel come in not to play Billy Joel, but to play somebody else to re-record the theme of Bosom Buddies. And we had uh, we had so many great guests on there. Uh, I'm forgetting some of them. You're right, Jeff Probst was one of them. And I think he actually may have hosted all of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can watch them all on the Adult Swim website. Um, and it was one of the most fun things to do. The casts are crazy. But that used to be what we did on Children's Hospital and NTSF and even Human Giant. All those shows that we started out with, you just call your friends and you'd have them come on and do the silliest thing, whether it was like having Casey Wilson play the ghost whisperer who didn't really like the ghost was too <laughs> confusing for her to hear. Or, you know, whether we had like John Krasinski took Michael, um, Michael Sarah hostage on the human giant 24 hour marathon. And we kind of keep on doing that. I mean, you know, whether it's on Black Monday, I just did that show with Don Cheadle and Regina uh, Hall. Like we just, you know, we we try to cast all of our friends uh, because we know it's going to be super fun. Um, when did you get to meet Jeff Probst during that whole process? I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I was on set as, with Jeff. Is he as cool as he seems like on TV? You know, I think that like when you get these guys like Jeff Probst or Tom Bergeron, these people who've been hosting for such a long time, mm -hmm. they are like the coolest because they have no stress in their lives. They are hugely successful. They are recognized everywhere and they don't have to do that much heavy lifting and they are just genuinely charismatic and oftentimes like huge huge comedy fans and jeff was uh, a big comedy fan got it wanted to do things differently because i think a lot of the times with somebody like jeff you know he's only seen in one way so for a chance for him to do something a little bit different and kind of not even poke fun at his image but just do something that is like comedy forward he's down with and i think that that's what you get 
a lot of times with people like, I mean, we had Charlize Theron come on, how did this get made? You know, like she listened mm-hmm. to the podcast and she wanted to come on the show. Like, I think that people sometimes get so pigeonholed in what they do that it's so fun. I mean, I, I would say that, you know, Don Cheadle, I think is one of the funniest people, Regina, like, it's like, you get these people that can do drama and comedy. And sometimes they just don't get as many opportunities to do comedy. And then I think conversely, a lot of comedians will get a, a chance to do drama. So it's always fun to see people pop up. Yeah, I'm a huge Survivor fan. So just seeing him on there, I just remember being like, what the fuck is Jeff Probst doing on Adult Swim? Oh, they, yeah. It they didn't seem like it would go together, but it did. And that was that was uh, one of my favorite things you've been involved in. But I got to ask you about the league. I know you're short on time. Um, how, how often do people ask you for fantasy football advice, just in general? Oh, I mean, it's nonstop. It's so crazy because the league is one of those shows. We did it for seven years. And it really kind of grew in its popularity. And I feel like there's still people who don't know it's not on anymore, Uh, but (laughs) it's great. I mean, you know, it's like, we love doing that show. I think we kind of got out at the right time. Like they wanted us to come back for more seasons, but after seven, I feel like you've done everything that you can do. You know, I think that we all felt like, what else could we do with these characters? But I get, get asked for fantasy football advice a lot. And what I always say, I mean, it's so kind of impossible to, to answer because your league is completely different. It's like, well, who's in your league? Who has, like, we have to really look at, yeah. like, you know, and, and, uh, and whoever they say is going to be, uh, you know, we got to get them, get them early. They always are going to like, you know, pull an Achilles or get turf toe in like game one. So mm-hmm. it's more about like how flexible you can be. And I always tell everybody, you know, um, giving me giving fantasy football advice or me listening to you tell me about your fantasy football team is like me listening to you tell me about your dream. It's only really yes. interesting to you. Absolutely. Nobody gives a fuck about your fantasy team. (laughs) No one cares. No one cares. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, but I'm in leagues. I play leagues. Um, Our, like we used to play with our show, but then that just kind of dropped off, but we all are still friends. We hang out me and Nick Kroll and um, especially, uh, and you know, we are all, you know, together here in LA. And Jason and you, I'm sure are you, are you still in a league with Jason? Jason, I mean, never was in our fantasy football league. Oh, really? Jason is not. Yeah, oh yeah. Jason, yeah. That I mean, Jason, I don't think has really ever really watches sports. I think he's rel- like would relatively admit that. I'm a much more of an NBA guy, uh, you know. And I think, uh, yeah. But Jason, no sports. No. Um. So like when you, when you did the the league, like when they pitched like a fantasy football show, where you just kind of like this is never gonna work because it doesn't on the outside it doesn't seem like it would and. It, it ended up being like one of the biggest things on FX at that point in time. Yeah, it was, it was, we were getting the highest ratings uh, at that point, you know, and um, not next to like, you know, American horror, horror story, notwithstanding, but the, um, I think what we would, what it was kind of crazy about it was when you look back at the year it started and I don't remember exactly what that year was fantasy football wasn't as big as it's become. Like we kind of crested the wave with fantasy football. We were getting out of the show as gambling and fantasy football came on like that whole new wave. Uh, So, you know, we were in this moment where it was like, Oh yeah, fantasy football. I understand about fantasy football, but we kind of caught the wave early and Jeff Schaefer, who was one of the creators with his wife, Jackie Schaefer, they, um, he had been in this league. This league was based on the people that he grew up with. So he had been playing for a long time, but I do believe it really, really grew in popularity. We just happened to kind of hit it at the right time. Cause I, I, I mean, I always knew it existed, but I feel like right now there's so many more with DraftKings and all this sort of stuff. I'm on the sleeper app now. And, you know, you know, it's like, they all have grown so much from the original Yahoo, which by the way, Yahoo still sucks. And I can't believe that uh, <laughs> it does. after so many years, not at all. It's improved. like the sleeper. I'm all about sleeper now for fantasy football and fantasy basketball. It's the best because the truth is, is like, I'm not behind my desk all the time. So I want an app that's going to be the most, now I sound like I'm doing an ad, but I want an app. I want an app that can do as much as I can do behind a desktop. And that was like, when I found sleeper, I was like, it changed my whole fantasy football game. When, when you're, I know you're a, a big improv guy, when you're doing the league, how much of that was scripted and how much of it was improv and how do you kind of work it? Like, how do you script a show or how do you, how do you improv a show when you have to kind of have a script, right? Well, you know, the league was an improvised show. Um, and what I mean by that is the same way that Curb Your Enthusiasm is an improvised show. You have a story, you have an outline. We're not just running around with cameras going, let's shoot this, let's shoot that. You would okay. um, have an idea for a scene 
and you'd put a, you know, you'd make an episode. So I wrote a couple episodes of the league. So you'd write the episode the same way that you would write a regular sitcom script. Um, but you would, instead of writing out every line, you kind of write out what you wanted the scene to accomplish. Right. And you'd have jokes and you'd have ideas. So like for, there's like an episode of the, the league that, um, I wrote where we wanted to have this thing about the bathroom cubby. We want a bathroom cubby, like a place to put your phone and everything outside the bathroom. So you don't have to bring it into the Mm -hmm. bathroom. So that's an idea that we have in the script, like the bathroom cubby. So that's going to be brought up. But then when we're on set, whatever we kind of improvise around that might grow to a different thing. Like, so um, when we did the marathon episode there, the joke in the script was every time I said the marathon, they said the what? I go the marathon. That was in the script. But then what they didn't have in the script was like me saying that my energy thing was called spunk. And that was something that was completely <laughs> improvised. Like, you know, um, so like that kind of stuff, like we would have areas. So you like, if we just shot what was the bare bones minimum, it would still be a funny episode, but because we had these openings and opportunities to go in different directions, it really allowed us to build on everything. Okay. Yeah, well, I know I only had you for a little bit of time, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, we got Paul Shear. He's going to be at 713 Music Hall this Sunday, August 14th. You can get tickets at paulshear.com, and uh, he's going to be doing a live. So me, uh, it's me, Jason Manzucas, you know, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, June Diane Rayfield, who you know, from Grace and Frankie, mm-hmm. uh, and Longshot. You know, so it's, it's a great, fun show. The three of us come out there, a lot of audience participation. And uh, if you don't get a chance to watch a movie beforehand, I still think you'll have a good time. Like we have a lot of people who come to the live shows that don't, but you'll kind of feel left out at the same time. Awesome, dude. Uh, well, I appreciate you giving me the time, man. And, uh, and thank you so much. Thanks, man. Bye. So that was Paul Shear, guys. Now let's move on to our What Would Jesus Do segment. And uh, we did put you guys on a little punishment last last a couple weeks ago, I feel like uh, you guys were not sitting in the WWJDs. We got some. They got to be nails, guys. I'm not going to just ask. And if they're half-assed WWJDs, we're not going to keep it going. And uh, I think we're on. Uh, this is a warning. This is another warning here, guys. We're going to do a, what would Jesus do? Today, but some of these questions have been very like too specific for us to use as what would Jesus do, or just like not great. And I mean, we love you guys, so we're not going to just use anything so uh hit us up on twitter use the hashtag ptg wwjd throw jesus in a situation you'd find himself in in today's time and uh make him good hashtag ptg wwjd to at pass the gravy pod on twitter this is the what would jesus do segment jesus jesus what would jesus do jesus jesus what would jesus do Put him in a situation in a maritime If you're off the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today And how would Jesus handle it? And then he gave it away this week's What Would Jesus Do comes to us from our buddy Brandon Whitehead at Brando Whitehead on Twitter And he says What would Jesus' favorite fish be? This is a very borderline question I appreciate Brandon submitting it But I'm saying like We gotta change it up going forward I have always maintained that Jesus has a sense of humor. I think his favorite fish would be the hand fish. The what? Hand fish. H-A-N-D-F-I-S-H. Is that an actual also, fish? Yeah, Google it. Not only just because it's funny uh, that his favorite fish would involve a hand, but uh, if you look at it, it's a cool ass looking fish. It kind of looks like it has, like, its fins are, like, more like arms. Hands. So, like, it looks, like, it, it it looks like it's fucking evolving. Yeah. I mean, just Google handfish and look at some of these pictures. This is a gnarly looking dude. It looks like he's got a fucking mohawk, too. Angel fish is right there, though. Angel fish is right there. Not as um, funny as handfish, though. And I think Jesus I, is a funny guy. I tried to dig a little bit deeper um in in mine and uh i just typed in what kind of fish is the jesus fish tilapia tilapia was it came up and then it says that uh scholars speculate that tilapia was the heavily most heavily referenced fish in the bible with a specific focus on the miracles of jesus and his disciple peter so therefore i feel like if jesus had to pick a favorite fish it would be a tilapia what if it was the band fish that would be a band 
still his favorite fit real big fish i think they're better than fish again if you guys want to go good tilapia go with it i'm gonna stick with hand fish though I'm it makes tilapia. me laugh yeah i'm on board with Wait. tilapia tilapia okay i also like the angel fish that was honestly what i was leaning towards as well but then when i did the what kind of fish is a jesus fish yeah, I, I felt like that was the one. I googled what's the holiest fish. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Like all of our, like, we just like look at the question. We're like, let's just Google it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I, I give me something like that. Coolest fish and hand fish was on there, so that's what I went with. Why don't people use? Like, I feel like we used to see the Jesus fish decals on more cars. I haven't seen them as much. Because they took Christ out of school, Alex. I do see more. Keep Christ in Christmas. Even like when it's not Christmas, but those are like those magnets people have. How do they think, how do those people think that the war on Christmas is going? I mean, I would feel like they definitely think they're losing it if they still got to. I always wonder that when you put like a political bumper sticker on, like no matter what side it is, it's just like, do you think that somebody's like, oh, well, that guy's wrong for them. I got some of them for them. This, this Honda in front of me. I'm in. Especially in today's political climate, if you put on bumper stickers on your car for politics, you're just asking to be targeted by the other side. And like, you're just advertising to the biggest assholes of the other side. Hey, I support the guy that you irrationally hate. Key my car. We should bring back like old political stickers, though. Like, I want a Ralph Nader sticker. Reagan Bush, 84. Yay! No, but like people that lost, but like in the 70s, who lost, who lost to Nixon, whoever that was. Frost. Cal- Frost Nixon. Put, like put a Calvin Coolidge sticker on your car. Coolidge won. Well, but when did he run? I don't fucking know. Ooh, Hubert H. Do- Humphrey. Hubert H. Humphrey. I know he ran for president. They also named the Dome after him. You could run like a Bush 92 sticker when he lost to Clinton. But he's still, yeah. I don't know. But just like that is that, like, I, and then like at, the, at what point do you take it off? I've always wondered that too. But you haven't really seen the Christian uh, fish, those little metal decals they put on there anymore. Not as much. Uh, I, don't, I don't see them as much. But um, yeah, back to the war on Christmas. I feel like those people that have it on a magnet and it's like August, I think they uh, they definitely think they are losing this war because they need to keep telling people to keep it in Christmas. Yeah, they're probably not thrilled about it, but bumper hey, sticker guy is a very a very interesting guy. Oh, you're either far left or it's either far left, far right, or nerd. That's it. What about a giant flag on the truck guy? Far right. What kind of flag is it? It's usually one flag. What if it's a pride flag? (laughs) No, I mean usually if if it's a giant flag, you're either it's either going to be ninety. I'd say like ninety percent of the time, Confederate flag. Ten percent of the time. Antifa. No, I 100% disagree. I would say it's that uh, the black and white American flag with the blue line across it. The back. The no, blue no, 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 no. That's he a very big one. Giant flag. Yeah, I seen. I've seen the like back the blue think, flag on so many trucks. Like the, I the whole backs of it. Oh, I I don't ever see. It. That's what I was gonna say. I was thinking the whole back and the whole back. I don't ever see that one. I'll see stickers for that. But I don't see it that big. But I guess I just haven't seen it. So tilapia, right? Tilapia. We, you know what I was just thinking, though? We should, we should get somebody with a truck to just put, like, a rainbow Confederate flag and confuse everybody. <laughs> like, what would you – like, who's mad? Pretty sure what? I've seen that before. I'm pretty like, what sure if somebody's entire that, back of their truck was that it's like, well, what are you mad about though? Which part? I may be gay, but I support uh, keeping history alive. Hey, look, it's still heritage and not hate. 
Yeah, but their heritage wanted to kill you. Yeah, well, you know, take do it bad sometimes, I guess. Do what Jesus would do. Turn the other cheek. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, you tried to bait me into a joke right there, and I'm not taking it. There it is. There's so the they Confederate, do have so somebody Confederate always, rainbow flag. Pat, just get the entire back windshield of your car like that. Just piss I'll off every... I'll pay for piss, it if you'll do piss it. Off you get to drive people. it around now. Piss off the people on the left for daring to have anything that's Confederate flag. Piss off the people on the right for daring to taint the Confederate flag with homosexuality. <laughs> I kind of want that now. <laughs> Just piss off everybody. <laughs> Was that, does that mean like you're like racist, but you're okay with the gays? No, it means I love gay people, but I love history and heritage as well. No, look, if, you, if you have that, my flag, forefathers just, fought here. Just I'm an asshole that supports gays. That's what that's what that flag says. This is getting into a weird place, so let's just move on. But tilapia is uh, if Jesus picked a favorite fish, it'd be tilapia. Yeah. The flag so that we Jesus got to drive the- around with on his car. <laughs> Gay Confederate flag from Jesus Fish, but okay. What flag would he have if he had if Jesus had a truck? I'll ask, I'll give you guys some WWJD examples. You can't use this one, obviously, but like if Jesus had a truck and got the entire back windshield covered with some flag, what would it be? Don't tread on me. I'm going with the coexist flag. Come and take it. No, would not be that one. No, definitely, definitely wouldn't be that one. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of different flags right now. Ooh, what, about, what if it was Norway? Because if you think of like Norway or Sweden's flag, it's kind of a cross. I think he'd have a Saturdays or for the boys' flag. I don't think so. It's divisive. No, it's not. Saturdays are for the boys. Rest of the days. WWJDs. Hit us up with WWJDs. Hashtag PTGWWJD to add past the great pod. Make them good. Or maybe the segment goes away. All right. And Jingle Blake worked far too hard on that intro. But you guys just send these away. So with that, we'll move on to the not cool segment where uh, we tell you guys what's not cool throughout the week or just something that makes you say, hey, man, that's not cool. Uh, You can hit us up with your not cool suggestions or just things that happen to you that's not cool. By using uh, the hashtag PTG not cool to add past the gavey pod. If it's something, if you step your toe, that's not cool. If um, you know you, if if all of a sudden your husband or wife decided to come home with a a flag draped all over the back of their car that they you you disagreed with, that's also not cool. And then also if you you get you you have a flag on the back of your truck window and somebody breaks it, that's also not cool. So all of these are not cools. Hit us up. Use the hashtag PTG not cool. We're gonna pick some of the best. Listeners submitted not cools each week to read, and then we're going to tell you ours. Uh, not cool this week is brought to us by littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com. You got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You get t- free shipping on orders of $10 or more. And if you use our promo code PTG69 at checkout, you're going to get 10% off your orders. Go get some awesome stickers. Go get some awesome t shirts. Go get some awesome keychains. You can get some custom keychains. Like I have this Gravy King one right here, it's pretty badass. Um, you can go get all kinds of stuff at littlemshop.com. If you're getting something from them, hit them up and uh, let them know you heard about them on past the gravy. Uh, I mean, I guess you could by using PTG69 at checkout to get 10% off your order. But yeah, best air freshers on the planet. Don't have one of those fucking baby back bitch little fucking trees hanging on your rear view mirror. Get you a little M air freshener. Have your car smelling great. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com and uh, go follow them on Twitter at little em tweets and on instagram they're at little em shop let them know you heard about them on past the gravy support the people supporting the podcast little em shop.com promo code ptg69 for 10 percent off your order at little em shop.com not cool man dude that's not cool not cool not cool dude that's not cool not cool not cool all right um Start us off with, uh, who, who's our first listener submitted? Not cool. Pat, read this one off. This one is from Jordan Welch. 
at J underscore Welch 2795. Took the car to my mechanic in Cyprus, walked to the bus stop to go back home, then realized I didn't take my apartment key off my set of keys. Had to walk over two miles oh. total in the brutal heat. Ugh, that sucks. That is a fucking terrible not cool, but a great not cool at the same time. Like, for this segment, it's great, but, like, yeah, man, that's an all-time, like, what the fuck did I do? And it's all, like, on you, having a little brain fart there. But, yeah, you're used to not having – you used to not having that. I, that's why I always just like, I take my, my car key off. I don't, I don't. Yeah. But like, if you don't think about it, like, let me see your keys. Or, yeah. Here's my keys. Here you go. You yeah. just used to have it. Like, I get it. I know. Yeah. Like it's just a brain fire. It's, it's awful. Absolutely awful. Yeah, dude. I'm sorry. Does suck. T's and P's bro. That fucking blows. T's P's. Um, you might win. Not cool this week. Very, yeah. very well could this week. Um, I got it pulled up now. So let me go to uh, our next one is Raymundo Benavidez at K Mundo B on Twitter. Raymundo says his not cool is getting sick to the point to where I can't make it to Garth Brooks to the Garth Brooks concert. And I believe Garth Brooks was in town over the weekend. He says, I rarely ever get sick and this timing sucks. Then he says, update. I got the COVID and he showed us a positive COVID. Oh. No bueno, buddy. No bueno. The fucking sucks. P's and P's, Mundo. At least you didn't forget your car keys or your apartment key <laughs> while you're getting your car worked on. You fucking asshole. You got that. Yeah. Uh, I, hey, you get, I almost said two weeks off, but no, you get five days off now and they expect you to go back to work. Get a couple days, catch up on some video games. Drink a lot of whiskey. Make sure you're getting your fluids. Listen to a lot of pasta gravy. Yeah. Pass the gravy bro with me and Pat. Watch and Pass the Gravy on our YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go subscribe to Pass the Gravy Podcast on YouTube. If you haven't, what are you fucking doing? Pass the Gravy Podcast. Search it. Hit the subscribe button. Screenshot it to us. And then also subscribe to Pass the Gravy Bro on YouTube as well and show us a screenshot of that too. Is that a Topo Chico you're drinking? I am drinking a Topo Chico. How'd you get your hands on that, man? Them, them motherfuckers are out all over the place. Are they? Yeah, dude, there's a serious Topo Chico shortage right now. Did not know that. Apparently, I'm going to have to come check out the H&B by your house. See if I can get my hands I like, on some. I like the lime ones that they have, but I also oh, don't see, mind that. You H can still H find H those has, a little bit. H&B has their own ones. Can't even find those right now. Not not near the restaurant, man. We're, oh, we've they had a whole fucking thing of them. Dude, we've been out for a week. We can't get our hands on anything. Yeah, I don't Weird understand little side the, quest like, there. I don't understand the uh, obsession with Topo Chico. I think Topo Chicos are tight now, but like I've never been like, oh, I have to have a Topo. I mean, we we put them in drinks and shit. It's good club that soda. Make, that makes more sense. Yeah, it's just fancy clubs. And soda. people just love to drink them, so we'll charge you for them all day. Yeah, I like the lime yeah. one. It gives a little bit of flavor. All right. Um, next we got, yeah, T's and P's Mundo. Hopefully you're getting better, man. Um, our next one is from Alexis Garcia at Alexis, Texas underscore on Twitter. And she says her not cool is people that bitch about putting miles on their car. Call me crazy, but aren't cars meant to be driven? You'd think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I get like people that like, if, if it's like an unnecessary mileages and stuff, but like, yeah you do get a car to drive it like if your commute is long because you live far away from your job that's not anybody else's problem but yours i mean yeah that's i put a good decent amount of miles on my cars i always have one because i live in katie and i work in memorial so that kind of kind of tends to pop up there get put you know mile it's you know at least 20 minutes each way back and forth every day and then also my parents have lived in Fredericksburg for years. So I go back and forth, which, oh, thank God I brought that up. Cause that just reminded me of another not cool. I need to fucking add on here. Um, but Wait, yeah, check in our I, group chat and we're going to add, like, you can use that as a, as a not cool. I can't cause I'm, cause I, you know, we're doing this through my phone mm -hmm. right now. Cause every other way I try to do it failed and I'm afraid to pull up messages. Cause I think it'll kick me off of here. Fair. Just because everything else yeah. has gone wrong with us trying to record this today, so. Right. 
But uh, yeah, Alex, I don't fucking get that. Especially if someone's like, you're like, hey, do you want to drive? And they're like, I don't want to put miles on my car. Like, dude, we're going fucking three miles away. Shut the fuck up. Like, those are the people that wear me out. There was an yeah. annoying thing that happened to me, I think, last week or two weeks ago, where for work, I had to go to one of the remotes. And it was about 45 minutes or so away. And I get there. The... The, the talent isn't there, so I text them. They don't answer. I call them. They don't answer. I call them again. They don't answer, but like they reject my call and send me one of those like automatic replies, just saying I can't I'm driving. No, they say I can't talk now. They just said can't talk uh... now. I'm like okay, but I asked you if you're here. You haven't answered me. So then I call like the sales person, and then they tell me, oh, that was canceled. And I'm here yeah, at the event know. that was 45 minutes away. Like, oh, yeah, we told that this one person. They didn't tell you? Like, obviously not. I'm here. Robert is now winning Not Cool of the Week. That is a fucking solid Not Cool. Like, hey, man, I better be getting paid for my time here at least because this was not communicated to me. Yeah. So that that's like I can understand like I so you made me put these miles on my car for no reason. You use but you use putting miles on your car as like a plus when you're complaining. You're like, first off, like I didn't get told this, and then I came all the way down. I had to put these miles on my car. Like you don't lead with like I had to put miles on my car. It's always like something else. And I had to put these miles on my car. Hour and a half round trip. Yeah. That's fucking bullshit. I mean. Sorry. But here's the thing, like, can you, it, since you're traveling for work, I don't know if you do, there's apps that can track it, Robert, that track how far you're driving, and then you can deduct that from your taxes at the end of the year. Yeah, but then that's another extra step I got to do. Like, I I'm gotta... just saying, it, it's something to think about, because you got, you actually do, I know you guys will, you travel a decent amount, you go down to Galveston sometimes for stuff, like Kima. That's something to keep in mind that like download one of those apps, track your work, travel miles. And you, it might help you deduct and might get a couple extra hundred at the end of the year. Yeah. I thought, I thought about doing that when I did weddings. Cause you know, we did travel to the wedding and uh, eventually I would just forget to do it. And so I'm like, okay, well I haven't been tracking for the last few months. I mean, if Robert can't remember, then there's zero chance of me being able to. True. Also, your screen is freezing, Pat. Sorry. I see. I just, I didn't even exit out of it to check the messages. I just did the pull down. So I was right mm. to not. Yeah, yeah, it was It was just your hand like this. Yeah. Sexy. Um, but, but so, so that was Robert's not cool, huh? Uh, I mean, I was just tacking on to that one. Okay. Uh, well, that was Great. our last listeners admitted minute, not cool. If you want to send us yours, hashtag PTG, not cool. Um, to at Pat's Gray Pod. Robert, what is your what is your not cool then? I, I mean, guess, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. But I, mine right now is like Astros fans and the lineup. The Astros are in first place, like tied with the Yankees for the best record in the AL. But every single day, they're complaining about the lineup. And like what they're always finding something to complain about. They, they just can't handle winning. Mm-hmm. I understand it two days ago when they had that 11 o'clock game and it was the Peacock game or whatever. And I should have, when I looked at, cause I bet them and I should have understand why the line was so close that we were just going to play all of our backups. And like Jordan was like the only starter playing, but then when I started watching the game, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I bet on them. I don't, I don't like that all of our big hitters are not playing. And then we fucking lost one, nothing. But that also reminds me of another one where people complain that the media doesn't pay attention to the Astros. And then when the media puts the game on a nationally broadcast game, they complain about that. Well, it's not nationally broadcast, though. Well, like besides Peacock, like they had ESPN just like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that, oh, dude, these announcers suck. They're just not ours. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Which, by the way, if, if I don't know if you guys watched the Peacock one. It was great. 
Because, you know, they, they do the same thing Apple TV Plus does. Is we're, we'll send Blum, and then they send one of their guys. And it was it was really funny. Like, they, they had great moments. They were both telling good stories back and forth. It was a good broadcast. I I, enjoy, I really enjoy when they do that. I, I tried to watch it, but I couldn't figure out Alex's Peacock login. I didn't want to ask. Oh, I'll get you. I'll, uh, you should have texted me. Yeah. It was it was good, though. Oh, I got you. you got, there was one moment when uh because like rain just poured through real quick and one of the the other guy goes what was your favorite or who was your favorite teammate to hang out with during a rain delay and blum goes can i say jack daniels <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's why i fucking love you blummer and tomorrow's game is on youtube for free people are gonna play like oh i don't have youtube Oh, it is? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Everybody has YouTube. Everyone has YouTube. Yes. Everybody That's my favorite. It. It's when it is the Apple TV Plus game on Friday night. It was like, well, you can't fucking watch it. I'm like, yes, you. they've been saying this all year. Just go to apple.com and click on the game. You don't need Apple TV Plus to watch it. They just have the rights so they get the fucking views, you dumbass. You know, Thursday Night Football is going to be on the Amazon Prime video this year, I believe. And Luckily, so I have it. You- just and every, a lot of people also have it but like just that like not having not being able to just go on your television and be like this channel like having to go to an app and stuff like that people just lose their fucking minds oh it is gonna piss me off because i don't have smart a smart tv and my laptop doesn't have a uh hdmi port to even just connect to my tv it's about the shittiest laptop ever but uh yeah that'll piss me off but i mean i'll just i'll watch it on my laptop it's not that big of a fucking deal and if you don't have a friend that has amazon prime that's a good enough friend to let you borrow their password to stream you don't have a good friend sorry everybody knows somebody that has it stop being weird it if i can justify fucking paying for it and i like order just a little bit of shit online you guys can fucking get it so fucking deal with it, people. That is that is a good one, though. What about yours, Pets? What's your not cool? Uh, we actually still have one more uh, listener. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I thought we used yeah. it well. Well, because uh, Robert's one tied in, so it cut mm. it. So, all right. Uh, the last one is from Javier Perez at Silky's underscore man. Not cool on myself for forgetting to turn off the sprinkler last night. Looks like some alarm setting and a high water bill are in my future. Yeah. Yeah, that fucking blows. Water ain't cheap. That shit will, uh, that shit will fucking catch up to you. Like, I know even sometimes I'll notice if, like, all you realize that your toilet was running all night and you notice it at the end of the month. You're like, oh, this is a little bit higher. And that's just toilet running. Sprinkler going? I can't even imagine, man. That That's a good not cool. I'm still going to give the best one so far to Robert for having to drive an hour and a half both ways for something that was canceled, not just not being full. Right. And, and Jordan, like, close. Jordan, non, non-PTG co-host one is, like, Jordan's is really terrible. I, I, don't, I don't, I think you were using the restroom when, when he did that, but Jordan forgot this fucking, left his, his apartment key on when he was getting his car fixed and had to like walk really far it fucking blows yeah that sucks yeah um but yeah that's a really good one javier uh so mine my first one is just me and alex have talked about it i think a little bit on here one of our favorite bets this season is betting no run first inning just a baseball bet you bet that nobody's gonna score in the first inning of the game game i continually get fucked robert with two outs the one that happened yesterday, at least it was in the top of the first, still pissed me off. It'll be two outs in the inning and a solo home run. Constantly. I it's it's happened like six times this year. And you this is the first time it's happened in the top. Usually it happens at the bottom of the first. Zero zero, two outs, solo home run drives me fucking insane. I hate it so much. Cause it's my new favorite bet to make. And I it's right there. You can fucking taste it. And then bink, god damn it. It just sucks. Um, my next one is I was. I'm really glad you have another one because, like, I love you, buddy, and I like talking bets with you. But like, 
it's like I talked about this with Paul Shear, like nobody gives a fuck about your fantasy team. And that's kind of like nobody gives a fuck about your bets. Gamblers don't do. also bet. Yeah, right. see that only like, gamblers that know. I, I actually very have two specific. More. I have two more though. Uh one is my parents just finally moved out of Fredericksburg. They're in Johnson City now. And uh I Dick I, City. I don't think I can ever actually go because my brother texted me yesterday that my dad found a three foot rattlesnake in the house. I don't know as an element of danger. And apparently the house is just kind of like all around the outside of the property. It's just like Rocky. So like their fucking environment. I'm not cool with that, man. They put down a lot of grass. I don't, I don't get a mongoose. I was so what we're going to need to get is I'm going to tell my parents and I was kind of thinking, you know, bachelor parties this weekend, it's out that way. I was thinking maybe Sunday I would drive up after we were done, spend the night and then just drive back to Houston Monday morning. And uh, yeah, don't think I'm fucking doing that now until I'm going to tell my parents they need to just get a bunch of those. Uh, it's like a, it's basically a 22 pistol, but it's like a shotgun round that kind of comes out of it. It's basically just a snake, ra- a snake gun. You keep it on your hip. You hear a snake, you go, ah, bam, and just blow it the fuck away. I need those out there. Uh, my last one is actually for a friend of mine. So in my group chat league this year, we decided what, we're just going to take our usual buy-in, everybody in the league, and we're going to go buy a trophy for the league now. So every year we're not going to buy it. It's going to be a pride league now based on the trophy. And he goes uh, – <laughs> he went to the trophy store uh, today uh, to get it, and he was going to get all the previous winners engraved on it. So they're going through the names, and he's telling them name, 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 name. And like I said, it's a trophy store. So there's, like, parents with their little kids getting Little League trophies and that kind of stuff, and they get to my teen name. She goes, uh, what was it for this year? And he goes, uh, 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 look at my asshole. And she goes, I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up. I couldn't really hear that. And he goes, look at my asshole. And people are just looking at him, and he's just embarrassed as hell. <laughs> But hey, so I, he was like, <laughs> you should add that to your not good. cool this week. And I was like, I actually think that's very cool, but I'll add it for you for secondhand embarrassment reasons. <laughs> it's a great team name. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good, that's a good not cool. That's a good not cool. I'm glad you included that. Yeah. Um, Okay, my my aunt cool is like uh, Pat is on his he's using his phone to broadcast because we were having some technical difficulties. But oh, that's like, another I, one. Yeah, <laughs> there's a there's an ongoing group chat that has a a not cool that's going on like as we speak. That's why if you're watching the video version, I keep looking down and my watching my phone because a not cool is just currently going on and unfolding right now. But uh, my original not cool going into this was my car. Uh, I got I got I got in my car yesterday after work was like. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna get some chores done. I'm gonna go for a run. I'm gonna get all this stuff done. And uh, I, I turned the key and it goes, <laughs> wouldn't start. And then I thought back, I was like, this morning when I got in, it went, <laughs> and then I get started. And I was like, I didn't even think anything of it because it started, but it was like, oh, fuck, this is bad. And then you're like, battery, or as I've learned a couple of years ago, alternator is something that might make your car not start. And I was like, fuck, this is going to cost me money. And uh, luckily, my buddy Chili was there. And I was like, hey, man, uh, can, are, you, are you about to leave? He's like, I'm actually packing up right now. Why? What's up? Bud? What's up, my friend? And I was like, well, do you think you could pull down in the garage and help me jump my car? Or just like, let me, you, let me use your car to jump my car. He was like, yeah, not a problem at all. So I was like, well, let me get my jumper cables from behind my seat. So I go to get the jumper cables. Don't have jumper cables. Thought I had jumper cables. Was 100% sure I had jumper, jumper cables. I have like straps to strap shit down. I have a net like in case I got a bunch of stuff and I don't want flying out of the bed of the truck. Got that. I got all kinds of other. I got a fucking umbrella that was left from, from my uncle when he had the car. Like I had that there. No jumper cables. And I could have sworn there were jumper cables in that bitch. And uh, luckily, Chili had jumper cables. Chili, again, to the rescue. And so I uh, I got my my car I, I jumped my car i know how to jump a car too no big deal like i felt like i mean it's just like man, I, 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 I would have felt like a bitch if i didn't but it's like you kind of feel like it's like you kind of feel like a man you're like yeah i should know how to do this but i did i still knew how to do it still knew how to do it was able to do it and i knew like oh red is the plus black is the negative i you gotta, you gotta get that but uh 
still figured that out and uh just it was like okay man shit but then went had to buy a new battery but apparently my battery was like almost five years old and the guy was like yeah dude this battery is really old i was like well i got i gotta get used out of it but it's just like one of those unexpected like car expend expenditures you gotta make um so that was my original not cool coming into this and pat you didn't get to see this because you are you are in this group but um you, you uh we, you're using your phone so you couldn't see this but um my brother and our and we got a bachelor party coming up and uh my brother said in this group i want to start at the very beginning of it i did when um, i when i scrolled down and blanked it i did see what's going on though so that scared me so yeah um it said i'm trying to find the beginning of this my bad i'll, I'll set up the beginning uh while no. you try and find it no. Okay. It said, all right. So nobody freak out. I just got a message that our verb VRBO just canceled our reservation this weekend, five minutes ago. Uh, so it's like a, a group of like 10 guys going. So like we already kind of like calculated costs and everything. Uh, he said, I just requested a reservation for a similar property in that same area that would end up being cheaper, uh, waiting to hear back. And then he was just like, but fuck Pamela and he's like i'm going keyboard warrior on this bitch and i was like yo can I, anybody review her because if you want to just give this out i'll give her info out on the podcast right now like and we can all go tank this bitch um he oh. will not do that he's a good person and uh, but he should give it I to know. us because i'm definitely going to review this bitch but um so yeah look like as we were as we were discussing everything else in the not cool segment we apparently just got approved for another one but um yeah not cool is it like two days before we're supposed to go somewhere they just canceled on it and uh we almost didn't have a, a spot it's like i mean i guess we could have just got a hotel but it's like we we had a house for the boys and like you don't want to go to a hotel for a bachelor party though you know i have been to bachelor parties where we stayed in hotels right. before and there wasn't a problem but just like when you, when you think you're going to be staying in a, in an airbnb or a vrbo or whatever and you had it all ready to go then um yeah there was some bullshit that was some bullshit to just cancel on us like that. Especially yeah. when like we had specified, because I know there's like a no parties rule, but my brother specifically, when he put down like the, the request for it and they they okayed it, he was like, this is for a bachelor party. These are the people that are coming for a bachelor party. And it's Not like, right, you, knew it that, you knew it was a bachelor ago? party. Like, oh yeah, about a month ago. But it's like, yeah. like this is for a bachelor party you can't be like actually no parties it's like it's called a bachelor party you can't say no party like we, we can go through this every single time i'm like i don't like i don't understand that you can have a house that sleeps 16 people and then when 16 people show up you're like no parties you're like what is 16 people in a in a house what is that Bible a study. gathering yeah we're just we're just gonna read the word of, of the good man the good the good book we're gonna read the good book and we could tell it's Kumbaya. not a party we're a coven of wizards we practice witchcraft, but we're men, yeah. so we're wizards. So canceling our VRBO right before. Like, I, VRBO Two sounds like That's so much less up. cool than Airbnb. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fuck that bitch. And now like we know where the house is. So like we're going to go and do we burn the house down? I don't know. I don't know. Just to send a message or like don't fucking cancel on us. Oh, oh yeah. If somebody, gonna... else is, if somebody else is staying there this weekend, oh, we got to beat them up. Oh, yeah. No, that'll be another thing. Like. I don't know if you can report people on VRBO to the Better Business Bureau, but if she canceled us and then booked somebody else immediately, like, you know she canceled us because they offered more money. That's fucked up. And we'll I call will the cops go and, and say that they're dealing the drugs door. in that house. I'm going to poop on the front door. And you might mean, Pat, don't you mean the front doorstep? No. I will bend over, <laughs> spread my cheeks, and poop on the front door. I always have one in the chamber. Just in case, yeah. You never know. You never know. But yeah, that was uh, that worked out. It worked out for everybody, and in, in the long run. But uh, luckily, we found a spot that approved us really quickly. But fuck Pamela, who was in charge of the fucking house. So um, fuck Pamela. All the homies hate fuck, Pam. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. Um, yeah, that's my. Those are my not cools. Um, Pat, will you tell everybody about the PTG merch store and our new socks while I go run and take a piss real quick, and then we'll get to the answers segment. I will, but I also, as you're going, I just got to add one more, another not cool. Uh, Aaron Church has hit another home run. But He's 40, at 45 now. Five, yeah. Fuck him. that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. Speaking of fucking, if you love socks, 
<laughs> and you need grip. Get your mind out of the gutter, Robert. God, my bad. My wear bad. the new <laughs> past the gravy merch socks uh, that are now on the store. You can't. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still pulling it up right now. I said that just to fucking buy time, and I made myself laugh. Uh, they're sick as fuck, dude. They're nice black socks, gray microphone logo on there with the star right above it. 16 bucks. That's well within what you're going to buy for good quality socks. And no other socks are going to have the logo of your favorite podcast on there. And so go ahead. All the, all the groomsmen are wearing them. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to look sexy. Like My, my, my foot game is going to be off the charts, dog. Uh, also... I uh, I don't know what shipping times are. I don't know if you can still get them in time. Get the Pass the Gravy Office t-shirt. Or uh, I don't know. Is that what we're allowed to call it? Something like that for the office trivia night. Get that. We got the, the same stickers, your regular Pass the Gravy shirts. The always classic Dallas Kill JFK. People don't forget. Uh, maybe someday they the don't. No Shirts, No Shirts, No Condom shirt. You can get your Pastro shirt. It's kind of off season right now for it, but get your hoodie now. So as soon as that first cold front comes through, you have your pasta gravy. Well, cut the astronaut. sleeves off and have one of those like sleeveless hoodies. Those oh, are very hot, hot right that now. In Texas. It's still too hot for that in Texas. But hey, but when the first cold front comes through, you'll be ready. You'll have your pasta gravy hoodie ready and uh, ready to go. Uh, Mostly the, the socks though. Sticker. PTG socks, hottest thing out there. And like my whole, my whole, uh, all, all the groomsmen in my wedding. Uh, and, and grooms and ushers everybody in my wedding party uh is going to be rocking the ptg socks on my my wedding day so if you want to like pretend that you were in in my wedding party just like yo these are alex's wedding party socks and you just say that you're like you you're, you're an unofficial groomsman if you buy these socks so go do that and um support the boys and uh, head over to passgraymerch.com you may not be in the wedding party but you can be part of the wedding party Perfect. I like that. Pass the gravy merch.com. If you get anything, let us know what you got. And then uh, send us a picture. I know is it David Ruiz. He's ready for office trivia night with his PTG office shirt. Uh, be like David, go get your, go get you some pass the gravy merch, pass the gravy merch.com. This guys is the answers segment. Well, if you just answer the question, why don't you just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer. Answer the question. Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. Yep, yep, right. Like, what question do you like? Answers, 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 answers. Any questions? Um, all right. If you have anything you'd like to ask us at all, uh, all you gotta do is hit us up at at Pass Great Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. And uh, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know your question. Give us an idea, something like that. And uh, we will bring it up on one of the upcoming podcasts. Let's go to uh, our podcast son, Skylar Lester, starting us off today. At OMG, it's Skylar on Twitter. Skylar says, why do people keep leaving things in Jesus's hands knowing that they have holes in them? I actually had not thought about this until he brought it up. I was like, yeah, it's in his hands. I mean, I've heard it's in God's hands, but it's like, leave it in the Lord's hands. And he's like, father, son, Holy ghost, all like three in one. Um, yeah. It does seem like kind of kind of productive to leave something in somebody's hands who has holes in them. Surface tension. Maybe it doesn't fall through. Maybe the meniscus. That was a science term that I remember had to do surface of water i mean if you're leaving viscosity water, if you're leaving water in his hands probably not a good call but like at that point why not just get a cup i think jesus could handle you know just carrying stuff yeah he could like cup them together and probably find a way to like oh you can still see that way. yeah 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 so i mean he's jesus so like if, if like there's anybody that can figure out how to like seal stuff with hands like it's probably jesus Think about it this way. Jesus could walk on water. He could probably still put that same force field right over the hole in his hand anyway. I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. That's a great question, though, Skyler. I like where mm -hmm. you're headed at. Yeah. I was thinking outside the box. Um, Danielle Weston at Danny underscore Weston asks us this one. She says, if a porn star is getting undressed, are they getting dressed for work? Not necessarily. There's plenty of fucking porn out there where they stay clothed. But if a porn star is getting dressed 
to go shoot a porno, then yes, she is. If she's getting undressed to go be in a porn, then absolutely he or she is getting dressed for work by getting undressed. They could also be getting dressed and be getting ready. C-F-N-M, I think is what it's called. Closed, closed female nude male. That's what that stands for? Yeah, dude. The chicks stay with their clothes on, the guys get naked, and then they just like wow. hike up their skirt and fuck them. <laughs> wow. How about that? Something C-F-N-M. I've ran across in my travels. <laughs> Good to know. I, feel like we yeah. learned, I learned a lot today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that like, yeah, they could be getting undressed and getting dressed for work. I do think that, that plays, not but not always, not exclusively. It goes both ways. Like some point starts, you know? Yeah. Great question though. I like that. These are some solid questions we got this week. Um, Alex. O at Alex McThunder one on Twitter says, would you rather fight a chicken every time you get into a car or fight a flock of geese once a year? By the way, you have a sword as a weapon for these geese. I think we've had a question similar to this, but it was with like a monkey and something chimpanzee. else. A chimpanzee. Uh, I, like, I like these kinds of questions. Um, would you rather fight a chicken every time you get into a car or a flock of geese once a year and you get a sword to fight the geese? Yeah, I'd go sword geese once a year. Like just, I'm going to fuck close. up some geese. Dude, Let's chop their heads people, off. People think like forget about how many times you're getting into a car, and it's not just if you're driving. Anytime you get in a car, but you get out to get gas, you're just driving like down the street from your house. You get in, you have to fight a chicken to the death. It's like you get out. Think, imagine the, the scene you're causing there at the gas station. It's like who's this guy fighting, uh, fighting this chicken? Or, yeah. or maybe this is exactly what we need to like get everyone to use public transportation. That's a great point. Yeah. But think about it. every bus There's stop. Be some people like, that don't want the confrontation. Think of it this way, though. The the bus still has to count in this. You get on there. Bus every not a car. bus stop. Bus every not a car. bus stop you get. No, I'm counting the bus. Every mm-hmm, time your bus car. stops, there's a group of people getting on and fighting a whole new group of chickens. It would take forever. Bus is not a car. There would just be herds of chickens at every bus stop. Like, what the fuck what? is this? I'm picturing chickens in little like leather jackets holding little switchblades, like a little gang of chickens. 1950s gang of chickens. But like, yeah, like I feel like if you switched this and it was like you get a like, sword to fight the chicken or you just have to fist fight a bunch of geese once a year, then that would make it more. I'd still take the geese. To answer. I'd still take the geese too. Cause like, yeah, geese are scary at a certain point, but like if you just grab one by the neck and you beat the shit out of the rest of the geese with that one goose, like, I think, I think you could, you know, I, I think I could take some geese. Yeah. They'd get some, they'd get some bites in there on me. I'm not saying I wouldn't come out. I'd come out completely unscathed, but like, I think I could fuck up some geese. If it's me versus geese, I take me every single day. Plus at the end of it, I'm gonna have a bunch of fucking geese that are dead and pre-tenderized i'm gonna have some good ass dinner and you're gonna have a bunch of geese grease so you don't have to go to the store and waste money on expensive goose grease yeah you don't need lube when you've got the geese grease geese grease exactly yeah yeah no it's uh, the answer is obviously fight the geese like i mean geese can fuck you up a little bit but once a year versus literally you i get into my car at least twice a day do you have any idea how fucking tiring that would be to have to fight that many goddamn chickens it's just not worth it yeah no i i think yeah geese is is the way to go and then also just geese grease i just think of the movie grease with geese R. R. The actors which love would be you hilarious love you girl but just like all the songs, so you're the one that's like, ah, 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 ah. that sounds more like a donkey, but it's just like a goose honking instead. Like that would be funny. Go grease lightning. Your ah, 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 ah. <laughs> like the geese aren't singing it, but like there's just a goose in the background they're of just, every song. They're just honking. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, there's no singing in it. It's like the same music, but it's just honking from geese. Instead, because they have, they're they're not musically trained. 
oh no i just want a goose like dubbed into the background of every one of those songs goose grease like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm just picturing goose songs and all of the fucking grease songs right somebody now somebody edit that make put that together how many geese are in a flock of geese i would say at least eight but probably closer to 12 to 12 to 20 i mean it's a lot of geese you're you're gonna get fucked up during this fight but if well, I got I a sword, a, I think like a flying V, like on Mighty Ducks, that's how that's what a flock is. So you go, yeah, one, two, I'm thinking at least do, do, 12 to 20. Do, do. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think you have to have at least seven. Because see, I'm, I just, if you're watching the video version, it's like a flying V formation. That's seven geese right there. And it looks like it's like a good enough V to where I'd be like, that's a flock. It takes five or more to be considered a flock. So yeah, you take out two. You still have five. Yeah, that's a perfect V. Enough to make a V. If they can't make a V in a flying formation, it's not a flock. We're going to go off of what the first picture I pull up is. Oh, no. That's too many, huh? Ooh. Uh, well, let's just count out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, well, the 14. answer said five earlier. So let's go with five, at least five, but enough to form a V. There was 32 in this picture. It's too many. That's a flock, but it's a big flock. Technically, that was the second picture because the first one did not have the full flock in, in the picture. I would still take fighting 32 geese with a sword over a chicken every time yeah, I a got sword, Yeah, a sword is a game changer. You just stab the fuck out of them. Like, you're going to fuck them up. Or just, like, they come flying at you and you go, ah, Hercules. I mean, I think I could take hats. a chicken. I think I could take a chicken. But it's like just the hassle of every time you get in a car as opposed to once a year. It's like once a year, you can like amp yourself up for like, all right, it's time to fuck up some geese today. Like, let's get it out of the way. And, and I'm also assuming in the scenario, you don't know when this attack is coming from the geese. So you got to train. And you know, it's like sword. you're safe for the rest of the year. You're like, like if it's I mean, like that would suck, though, if it like it's like you haven't had it happen to you until December. You're like, all right, damn it. Let's go. You yeah. Sword. Just a sword just drops out of the air. And you're like, all right. Ooh, is it once a calendar year or like once it has? I, I think calendar year is better than there's going to be at least 365 days. I like count. Cal- it could happen. There's a roll of dice. January. You don't know when. It could happen December 31st and then January 1st. They could get you fucking back to back, but then yeah. you got, you know, a full year Keep of it not happening. I think like, it has to be calendar year. Calendar year. I like that. But also, then you, you, you're going to want to try and train with the sword a little bit. So that's also going to help keep you in shape. I don't think I need to. I think it's stab the fuck out of geese. You give me a sword, I think I can take them out any day. A sword that you're going to want. I do have a sword with a me. I have a sword in this sword. room. It's a ninja sword. You're going to want a pretty heavy sword when going with this. Because you, you, when you make contact, you want that goose to fucking explode and just be sliced right through. And you got to like, you got to train with that or else you're going to wear out very quickly. True. Or just, just play goose you. grease for them, and they'll be singing along. And so, oh, just surround just yourself with goose grease when why, you see them coming. They, they try and land, and they're just slipping around. No, you put the movie Goose Grease on. They're just singing along with the uh, the music and goose grease, and then you get them looking away, get distracted. <laughs> That's a great question, Alex. So great question, buddy. Keep them coming. <laughs> Um, Josh Tree Cottle at Joshua Tree seven one three says Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Steven Seagal. Who you got? Now or in their primes? I don't care when. I think we go Arnold. No, I'm going Arnold. I think we go Arnold. He was the turn. No, I, okay. Here, especially in their prime, Arnold was big, but like, and people like to make fun of Steven Seagal. The dude is actually like a legit martial artist. He would have in fucked up Arnold in his prime. Yeah, not if fucking Arnold could just grab him by the arm and rip him off. He, he wouldn't be able to. He's so strong. Yeah, he's so strong. Okay, you you saw uh, Brock Lesnar's first fight, right? Against Frank Mir? Yeah, I did. He just dropped to the ground and fucking put him in an ankle lock. Like, that's all it would say. Like, Steven Seagal in their prime would have fucked up Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because he would... Also, he was big and toned. You have no idea if Arnold could actually fight, like if he could actually throw a punch. I'd still take Arnold. I would take Steven Seagal. He'd kick him in the face. Now, now? I'd still take Arnold. 
either, either I think or. I might. T- I think I, I, I'm tempted to take Steven Seagal now just because he has knowledge and they're both old. But Steven Seagal is fat as fuck now, and Arnold's still in good shape. So I think now Arnold I'm also saying. was a governor, so he's like learned leadership. Also, Arnold, that? Arnold now, especially like his opening move would just be to flick his cigar right in Steven Seagal's face. Yeah, he and Steven's burned, and then just boom. Like one punch from Arnold, that's not going to be great. You're not in great shape at that point. But I'm going to go Arnold over Steven Seagal. I think now I would take Arnold, and it's close, but in their prime, it's it's Steven Seagal. You, you're just agree. disrespecting you're martial arts at this point. You're right, I am, but I'm also respecting Arnold Schwarzenegger. The governor. That's a great question, Josh. That's the a very good question. I'm from the future um dave t at ppwl1 on twitter says with our final question he says is a 50 percent chance of rain the same as a 100 percent chance of rain in 50 percent of the area i believe that is what it is i think i found that out i want to say a couple months ago i heard that for the first time i think that's what it means which blew my fucking mind I think this is, i think this guy is a meteorologist and he wants us to say no so that he can come back next week and make well actually yeah, I don't understand. Like, I, we were actually talking about this on the Rod Ryan show this morning about like how partly cloudy and mostly cloudy kind of mean the same thing. And I, it was like, well, yeah, because it's partly like mostly is still partly. Not all. If, if it was fully cloudy, that's a different thing. But like partly and mostly are, are the same thing. Mostly I'm, is just more partly. I believe I have seen this is what it is though. Like fifty percent means fifty percent of the area is definitely going. So like 20% means that there's a 100% chance of rain in 20% of wherever you are. Yeah. Like when it's a 100% chance of rain, your whole Everybody's area getting is rain. getting rain. Yeah. But when it's a 10% chance of rain, there's a 100% chance of rain in 10% of the area. Yeah. Like one, one part is going to get like a quick shower. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, like when you, when, when it's explained to you, you're like, oh, that does, it makes sense. But your whole life though, just logically your brain goes oh well, there's 50 50 chance we're gonna get rain today and that's not what it meant the whole time once you find out you're like oh yeah that makes sense that especially now with radar tracking and doppler and all that shit they're like no we're better at our jobs than that like we know we can tell we can see where the rain is yeah there's these bands rain bands yeah that make her dance rain bands that make her dance i like that um yeah. That was a great question, though. I like this is a, one of the best answers questions we've had. Is Dave T new in, in a minute? Um, no, he's written in before. Apple. He's written in before at PPWL oh, yeah. one. Yeah, he's definitely written in before. But uh, appreciate your questions and keep them coming, man. Uh, hit us up at Pass Great Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. If you want to hit us up on Twitter? Um, I am at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert is at Robert Barbosa zero three. Uh, please follow us all. Um, also. Robert does a podcast every week, new episodes on Monday, a recent study suggests you can go check that out with him and Sam each week, go subscribe to that, wherever you listen to podcasts, Pat and I do pass the gravy bro. If you watch big brother tune in with us and uh, some combination of me, Pat, Allison, and Emma, every time there is a big brother episode. So Sundays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we go live. Yes. We're very mean to me on Sunday. We were, your, your ratings would have sucked as well they would have sucked i'm sorry that i have three nights off a week and i wanted to take one for myself excuse me robert we uh we were all like we were in our group chat like like you know talking about the episode and then we we're like all right i'm gonna send invites here in a second so you guys can join and we can go live and pat's like i'm gonna take the night off and we're like what the fuck pat you just <laughs> discussed the entire episode with us like, i'm just a little tired yeah i had not been sleeping a lot the previous couple of days and like i said i have three nights off a week Daddy wanted one for himself. I have okay, two nights off a week. Bullshit! You don't work nights. I do podcasts a lot. No, I mean I literally work four nights a week, and the three that I don't, Big wow. Brother's on. I work morning. I sacrifice his nights, and I sacrifice my nights to do the mornings too. So you know, I'm just saying. Do you only sleep like two hours a fucking night anyway? You're a goddamn vampire. Exactly. But I do it for the content. I do it for the content. Uh, but at Pass Grade Bro and at a recent study 
pod um, on Twitter. Give us both follows there and then subscribe to the podcast. Even if you don't listen to our podcast, just like subscribe to them and then follow or subscribe to Pass the Gravy Bro on YouTube as well. Um, and then at Pass the Gravy Pod, give us a follow, share us with a friend. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for listening to us and watching us. And please, and, you know, please keep interacting with us uh, as we go on. And uh, shout out to Paul Shear for coming on the pod today. Um, until we talk to you guys next week, have a great rest of your week. Be good to one another and pass the gravy. Yeah. Bitches! Charlie has an apple bottom. Apple bottom jeans. Boots with the fur. With the fur. The whole club was looking at her. <laughs> <laughs>